bated breath for this one to get going. And uh, that will be a quick breath at that, as Golden Lakes will be the one that we kick it off on. Yo in the red, playing as the Berbers. Freaking Andy in the blue as the Japanese. And I believe this is the only map we had yet to see in the pool. I think right. this was the only one remaining. So welcome to Golden Lakes. And Golden Lakes, if you're not familiar, it's very similar to Four Lakes, uh, or Cross, as it used to be called, in that you have these four ponds around the edge of the map. However, there's a little bit of a mix-up here. We have this pit in the center with a ton of gold in it and the cracked earth terrain, too. So a lot more gold supply, very limited at your base. I believe you only have two, three tiles of gold, so six total um, at home. So you need to push out for that center area. Berbers can be good as a mid to late game option, lots of mobility there. But Andy, like I said, he felt like he won the draft because he had all of the sieves for Golden Lakes. I believe he had like Malians, he had Japanese, he had another uh, uh, hybrid map sieve and he felt super satisfied and he's gonna snipe a villager. Look at that, Andy going forward aggressively with his scout early on to find the docking villager of Yo. Luckily for Yo, the dock does go up. So at the very least, the fishing ships can be on the way, but early damage found here for our blue player and already an 18 to 16 eco lead at the mm -hmm. top of your screens. Yeah, really, really beautiful there for Andy. He got the dock started early because of the discount on the Japanese lumber camp. So you get that dock up first, and he's got the fishing ships, which are a little bit uh, faster collecting with the Japanese here. Fishing ships have double HP, two pierce armor, and work 5% faster uh, each age. Mills lumber camps and mining camps, 50% cheaper. So that's beautiful. Allows you to get that dock up super, super early. The newest addition is Cavalry Archers plus two attack versus Archers. I doubt that you're going Cav Archers against Camel Archers, but still, it might be a possibility. Yeah, most likely not, but it is an interesting idea, especially when, or if and when, the fights become centralized around that pit in the middle. Playing the hills, playing the mm -hmm. mobility of Cav Archers, maybe you find a use case for it. On the other side, we have the Berbers, and we've seen the prowess of the Berbers on display throughout this tournament, primarily on maps like Copenhagen, mm -hmm. and that late game ability that they have because of that unique unit in the camel archer but even still villagers moving faster helps with a little bit of economy boost and some safety in some areas and then stable units being cheaper that's just a nice boon for the fact that uh you can get knights out and use that mobility on this map as well ships moving faster hey that helps as well ships moving faster in these tiny little ponds you can do <laughs> circles right <laughs> maybe you get a galley and you impersonate the harrow scout and you just run around anyway the uh the ships are a nice little bonus for the Berbers, especially if you're micring the fires back, right? You can run out of range of your opponent. But I don't know if we're going to see a forward dock position here from Yo. It's it's quite dangerous to try and loop out around the map. Usually, they'll just head over to the nearest next pond, which is going to be that north or south option. Yo really needs to keep track of where Andy docks on these ponds because he doesn't want him to get away with 15... 20 Japanese fishing ships. That's a crazy eco balance to try and overcome, but both players here going for militia. Yeah, a couple extra sheeps coming home here for Mr. Yo to give a little boost to the eco, but by the same token, we take a look at those fishing ships numbers, and freaking Andy has already shot his way up to five to the only yeah. two to, uh, of his opponent. Both players opting for the militia early. Does Yo see this? Yo is tracking this, so he knows the militia are coming across, <laughs> he knows the Japanese infantry attack faster, but he's found a favorable engagement where he has his scout and he has three militia there. So excellent opening here for Mr. Yo. This is exactly what Andy didn't. He's got kind of a sour look on his face. This is not what he wanted to start this one off. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, two militia traveling alone get pounced on immediately. And now taking the hill, Andy will get the best possible trade he can at Beautiful this point from a near losing position. But Yo is going to be so happy with the result of this. Andy needs to save that scout at the very least to continue gathering information. He turns tail to run. He's going to try and pull the other militia off to the side. In the t uh, for the time being. I think after the militia death to the TC and the Wolves yesterday, and now the militia with Japanese dying here early, maybe Andy's going to stay away from that unit for the foreseeable future. Just unlucky that he ran right into the army from Yo, but Yo was tracking that with his scout. 
Beautiful, beautiful first engagement from Yo. I don't think he's going to be upset that he doesn't find much value against the villagers with his militia. He stalled out the opening from Andy. That is fantastic. Does he get the quick wall down here? Yo spotted it, but it is just a single palisade wall that needs to be tapped in order to secure that side of Andy's base. So while Andy, yes, will have been sad to lose the military battle, he'll be happy to have not taken any economic damage in return. Still sporting a small lead in the eco department. Now look at this, a villager coming north. North, runs into the villager of Yo, and they're just going to fish next to each other. A couple fishing buddies. This is my spot. Y'all have a license? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no, dude. Oh, the, he's from the fishing game uh, ministry right there. Exactly. He's taking him out. Park Ranger is showing up, and uh, Yo's going to pay a dear price. The fine is the life of one villager here, and that's great for Andy. While the dock is up once again for Yo, and he can get maybe a fire galley or, or a regular galley out to defend the pond he will lose the villager in the end. That's two vills already that Andy has picked off building docks, but at least Yo gets the dock up. The worst case scenario is the dock doesn't go up and your villager dies anyway. But now Yo is being pressured on those berries. Still, he has the fishing ship, so it's not the biggest deal. Andy has a little bit of map position, but Yo has the first fire galley out. Can't immediately range that villager, but the archers can, and it's weak from before. Okay, so a little revenge coming in here for Mr. Yo. Gonna deny the dock and kill the villager that made his way out here to the northern He's side. There again that too. to be deleted, and just like that, another villager comes to the south here for Mr. Yo. He's looking for triple pond domination. Triple pond domination. <laughs> <laughs> the TPD. <laughs> It's a classic acronym. We've been waiting all week to use that here on Golden Lakes, and these players have finally delivered us this map. We see another villager here for freaking Andy, almost on like a 10-second delay, 30-second delay to the movements of Yo. He will once again be surprised by the fact that Mr. Yo has already found himself to another pawn. But with that, we have some forward pressure coming the mm -hmm. other direction, spearmen and archers working away on those palisade walls of Mr. Yo. This is just classic good macro and decision making from Yo. You look at this. He's always 20, 30 seconds faster to those pawns than Andy. Like Andy killed the two villagers, but Yo got the docks up. He's got the position and he's got the water presence in the north. He's about to have the water presence in the south, I believe, once he notices that villager. And then he can really take advantage of all of that free food in the uh, form of the fish. The archers are still roaming around, but it looks like he's discovered the villager with the militia wow. that he kept in there. But of, of uh, I mean, of course, Andy gets the quick wall down, right? And he's... <laughs> That's what he's known for. I'm just going to expand this a little bit more. I yeah, like, yeah, I like yeah. room. I like room to work with as a villager. So um, excuse me while I make these walls just a little bit bigger. We like, we like more of an open concept <laughs> uh, <laughs> style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like a, an island in my kitchen. Exactly. Here, yeah. Uh, either way, I do believe that dock will go up because it is just a fire galley. Uh, and I think Yo queue. ejected the skirmishers from his archer range, too. So Yo tried to get Ooh. a snipe on there, but the scouts were there from Andy. So Yo is just going to lose his army. Yo tried to get the jump on Andy, but Andy was ready. Yeah, a bit of an overreach there, expecting to find an advantage, and instead it gets turned on its head. And this is a fantastic cleanup for freaking Andy in the end. Also, market use, heavy market use mm -hmm. for Andy here as he looks to make his way to the Castle Age. So yes, he only has control of one pawn. Still fish available, though, so the fishing ships are working away to great effect. Yeah, and those archers just kind of being annoying. I, I think... If Andy gets the walls to that wood line north of his base, it's kind of it's kind of weird that he still left that open. But I guess with the archers there, it's it's a little impossible at the time being. If he gets the walls up there, he can fish trap like a god. He's a he is a black forest player. He is totally accustomed to this. Unfortunately, bad angle for that villager to be fishing from, and the fire galley should be able to kill it. I don't know why it's not doing more it's damage. Hitting, it's, it's hitting the palisade. How is it hitting the palisade wall? Figure it out. This is supposed to be an open angle plan. What's going on? What is that's a load bearing wall? Hundred <laughs> percent. Oh, there oh. we go. They took it out. Finally. Okay. They, they, they took it out. Bad contractor there. Yeah, for real. Get your money back on that one. Okay, another villager goes down for Andy on the sides, and it looks like Yo will wrestle control of the pawn back once again, but he still has to be concerned with the pressure that's coming forward on his base. Skirmishers trying to deal with this pack of archers. Micro is on point here for Andy. Loses a couple lives, but needs to eliminate those of his opponent. Now will turn tail and retreat as he's only 30 seconds away from the castle age. Wants to keep those numbers up. I think Yo is long-term in a better economic situation with control over both of the 
those neutral pawns uh, in the north and the south. But Andy has gotten so much value with the archers and the scouts forward here, and it's going to be really difficult for Yo to push out. Fortunately for Yo, he does have space in the back uh, behind his walls, but still, Andy has the initiative on land. Yo just still trying to clear up the dock in the south. Yeah, uh, as soon as uh, Andy reaches the castle edge, Yo is able to click up. So there's a two and a half minute difference between the two players. War Galley on the way. First armor upgrade for the cavalry as well as Bosa here for our Japanese player. Something to take note of is, of course, that that fish is going to deplete at the back pond for Andy. He's already mm -hmm. starting to move on to fishing traps to keep the efficiency of the food eco. But Yo continues to expand on all three ponds and has already surpassed in the eco numbers. Mm -hmm. It's it's funny that Andy was uh, talking about the Berbers yesterday, played up against the Berbers on Copenhagen, didn't work out for him with Bengalis, right? Mm -hmm. And then you saw that epic matchup between Hera and Tato, where Tato was playing against the Berbers, and Andy... He's saying, like, man, any Civ with Hal Bonager kills Berbers. And he made that statement. He was so confident in it. And Nilly, Nilly and I just kind of look at each other, and I'm like, I don't think that's correct. And Nilly's <laughs> like, yeah, I don't think so either. But uh, Andy's better than both of us, so who are we to say, exactly, right? Exactly, right? Speaking of Civs with Hal Bonager, Japanese have some of the best Halb in the game, and they also have Bonager. So if Andy can kind of lock Yo into a position, maybe long term, he will have options here. That's exactly right. And with his earlier castle age and the tech advantage, he's going to clean up the fish on the southern There's pond. There's a hole? So at least able to equalize a little bit there. There is a hole. Uh, it's fine. He doesn't... It, it, listen, he thinks it's walled, so You know it how it walled. works. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. We're not going to be baited into uh, any craziness just yet on this one. Trying to batter his way through the palisades. We'll run into some houses behind. Perhaps those archers can make that wood line just a little bit messy with fletching and annoying the villagers, but probably no kills to be found. Now, if he did click into the walls, he would rotate around. Hasn't quite done so. We do have a forward monastery and knights on the field, though, already up to five. Mm -hmm. It's really, really solid, right? And it's it's easy to do that when you have 14 Japanese fishing ships. And Andy is just expanding his fishing eco over on the right side. He's going to get the second dock up there. He's got a dock in the north, which is beautiful. Um, and he's just going to keep dropping the traps as the monastery is forward, providing him a really, really solid position. If Yo is going to go into knights, he's going to have to sneak those past monks. And that's just simply not going to be easy at this stage because Andy is tracking everything. I'd even love to see a bunch of outposts around Yo's base. So wow. Andy knows when Yo tries to sneak out with these knights. This game is about to get crazy. We've got focal points all over the map. We have a forward from Andy onto Mr. Yo. We have that sneak forward from Yo onto Andy. We've got action in the top pond as now Andy has fire ships out looking to threaten that fishing economy that Mr. Yo has invested so much into, even dropping a second dock to ensure victory in this area of the map. Redemption forward monasteries and Berbers struggle a lot. Until they get a castle up, like they're really, really going to struggle against this. And there's Sanctity right there. Double forward monastery from Andy. I love this approach because it's not like he's all in on this. He's got double TC. He's got control of the pond in the south now. He looks like he cleared up the dock from Yo. He's going to control the pond in the north. And he's got fish traps going up to the right. So Yo started out with three ponds. And now Andy is going to have three pawns of his own and a forward position. Andy is locked in here in game number one of the set. My only concern is whether or not, or rather how he'll react to what is about to hit his base here on the southern mm -hmm. side. We have a Manganel rolling forward with Knights. Classic so yo. Already some damage taken on the wood line. He realizes after two villagers go down and he will pull back. But now you have to, it's that calculus, right, of sending maybe just enough back to defend while still keeping that forward momentum for yourself. I think you got to send a lot back to defend there. Your monks can keep themselves alive up here if you're paying attention. And that's going to be the difficulty, right? While you're clearing up this army, while you're defending, make sure that Yo just doesn't pop out and snipe all your monks. But this is a classic Mr. Yo play. He's got defense at home. And then he goes forward with this random aggression, and Andy's going to have to deal with this, and it's going to be a full clear-up. Great job. I think he's going to deal with it well. You said he needs to make sure to send enough back, and he does exactly that. More than double the numbers, but a monk here arriving to the scene and looking for a conversion as a few more night reinforcements arrive as well here for Mr. Yo. Second monk onto the field. The first one gets cleaned up, but the second one will find the conversion. Now the fight is engaged between the two packs of knights. Mr. Yo has the tech upgrade with forging in, and so very well 
Cal might win this one in the end with a small numbers advantage. And remember where Andy's monasteries are. They are all forward. Now, Yo went for that light cap tech, and this is what I was talking about. You're, you're paying attention to the defense, and Mr. Yo will always take advantage of your attention being elsewhere. He's one of the greatest players at tracking that. He knows exactly where you're looking, and he's going to attack where you're not paying attention. Clears up all the knights, and he teched into longbow. Or sorry, not longbow. Light cab. I, I would be amazed if he teched into longbow. The, 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 the longbow. <laughs> the, 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 the long cab. He teched into the uh, the light cab while Andy was busy at home. I like uh, Andy reassessing this forward castle position, right? As things start to go awry for him at the forward uh, base. He does decide to go for a more conservative castle placement on the hill here to start to lock down some of that go central gold control. Still more mangonels rolling forward here at the forward base for Mr. Yo to pressure the TCs and another monk looking for a conversion. Now it is important to note though that while Yo has wrestled back some control on land, we have the reverse triple dock, domin triple pawn domination here TPD. for Andy. TPD resulting in 26 fishing ships with three more on the way. So, Andy, I don't think he's made a farm, and I don't think he will need to make a farm this entire game if he holds the water control, which he should be in a good position to do. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a sweet place to be, right? To never have to invest wood into farms or food or wood into those farming upgrades to mm -hmm. make them more efficient. Now swooping in with some knights to clean up that mangonel. Great job once again. Village are getting involved in the fight. Look at that. I ain't scared of you. Flex on him. Exactly. He's he, he's walling him in <laughs> now. Yo, yo Never mind. Like, keep yourself <laughs> safe. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. The monk goes down, and the the distraction forward has not really accomplished what Yo wanted it to. He did manage to snipe the monks, but still, Andy is ahead in villagers. Andy is ahead in fishing ships, and now Andy is feeling perfectly fine, and he's going forward with the castle. Still no pikeman upgrade. It's only spearmen for him, but the monks are coming out. Can he get the conversions that he needs right now? The monk is trying to convert, but the monk goes down, and Mr. Yo is finding the villagers, and he's got more knights on the way. The bird knights are flooding out here. Can he kill enough villagers to deny this castle? A couple more reinforcements arrive for Andy, but just as I say so, more arrive onto the field for Mr. Yo. It's They're a messy fight. The spearmen can't keep up with the mobility of those Berber knights, and so while they would pack a serious punch if they ever find purchase onto their targets, they cannot catch up. And this is a lost fight for Andy in the end. A couple villager lives are lost to the endeavor even still has full control of the middle of the map, mm -hmm. and has the lead on all fronts, military numbers, villager numbers, and a little bit more map control. I'm surprised Andy didn't wait until he had like two monks in each of those monasteries. Then you pop out at the same time with your spearmen, get the pikemen upgrade, and then push forward safely for that castle. But I mean, you look at the economy right now, it's 112 eco units, 31 fishing ships. He keeps them coming out. He's got villagers producing from four TCs as well. And now, um, Yasuma Towers are being added from Andy. He'll get the guard tower research, he'll get ballistics, he'll get all of that good stuff and start pushing forward towards Yo's base. He's going to try and deny that gold long term. I was going to say, I love that because you see Yo's already thinking about it, right? With those villagers kind of building houses on their way to those gold positions and now looking for a castle as well. No towers close enough just yet to deny it. And so unless Andy brings some military over, it looks like Yo in the end will get a castle up here at the rim of that crater in the middle of the map. We still have lots of gold income, though, for, Miss, uh, for freaking Andy and just about at Imperial Age Resources, which is going to be crucial in this battle over the central part of the map. Yeah, and even if Yo locks, like, even if he gets that castle up, he can't clear the towers, so he can't take the gold. It's a brutal situation for him. It's absolutely brutal. And Guard Tower is fairly cheap if Andy wants to get it. Murder Holes is fairly cheap. The Knights are now working away on this tower, so maybe Yo can get access to the gold over there on the right side. But Andy could just easily plop down another tower in the center. Guard Tower research coming in right now. More barracks on the way. Another castle behind this. I mean, Andy's eco, it's not only miles ahead of Mr. Yo, but the efficiency on those fishing ships is crazy. They bring in food so fast. Yeah, another tower now looking to be rushed up because Mr. Yo is using those knights to great effect to take the guard towers down as soon as they come up. Pike's looking to find a few snipes, and they will. Those are very powerful Japanese pikemen, while they will ultimately lose the battle in numbers here tonight. 
It's looking good for Andy, though. A minute and 30 seconds away from the Imperial Age. Mr. Yo, nowhere close. The second castle coming up gives him plenty of safety from which to fire with the Trebs once he reaches that Imperial Age. More armor coming in for the Pikes, as well as ballistics to make the towers and castles more effective in defense. A lot of the times in this situation, Yo will go for a, a, an attack on the economy from his opponent to distract him and buy, buy himself enough time. But there's no opportunities here. And he's got the castles in the center protecting the gold. He's got walls at home. He re-walled that area that Yo pushed into from before. And you can see Yo kind of looping around with the knights and the light cab now. He's looking for opportunities to distract Andy and buy himself enough time to get gold access, go up to Imperial Age. But Andy has a phenomenal position in the middle. Yo has repositioned his villagers, though, to the north side of that middle area. So he is going to find himself some gold, and he does have enough stone for a castle. It's just simply that Imperial Age timing is crazy. Yeah, he sees Imperial Age comes in and immediately rethinks the castle position that he was looking to go for. Still waiting to see where that 1,200 stone will be spent as the villagers are chased away by some pikes and uh, camel archers in the queue looking to clean those up. Nice little raid here from Mr. Yo, but a great response as well from Andy to make sure not mm -hmm. too much damage is found. There's the castle position that Mr. Yo will opt for in a relatively safe position. But either way, Mr. Or freaking Andy already with uh, Trebs on the field can start rolling forward and look to clean this up. And he's already getting siege engineers. Wow. He's already getting siege engineers. It's a very expensive tech, but nothing's expensive in terms of food costs when you have 39 Japanese fishing ships working away as part of your eco. 96 villagers to boot, and he is looking like he can just easily pressure at these castles. Wow, that's how you can tell Andy's under stress when he's not going for the perfect fish trap. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on a second. Get yourself back onto Black <laughs> Forest, Danny, where's my that friend? heart rate, my yeah, dude? Yeah, we're going to need to practice that fish boom later. It's TPD, but, uh, you know, not the cleanest of the fish traps. All that said, Mr. Yo feels like he's forever stuck Castle Edge. Look at those resources, and he's even investing more into upgrades because he knows that he needs to deal some damage and make the game messy. But mm -hmm. we're never going to count Mr. Yo out until he counts himself out because we know this guy's got some fight. I see Andy buying stone. I assume that's for more towers to lock down. Yeah, he's going for more towers. And this is going to be a really, really annoying situation for Yo. But look at this. Yo goes for a forward castle. He knows he can't get any value from another castle in that middle area. He's going to start pr pressuring Andy's base and hopefully open a hole in the wall and just get his light cav inside. He's forced in the light cav because only six on gold, because he can't really take the gold in the center. He's just trying anything he can do to make this game as messy as possible. That is where Mr. Yo shines. Unfortunately, Andy locked this one down early with that fishing eco, and Yo is going to have to do something extraordinary to get back into it. Yeah, this is the last ditch effort right here, taking all the military, sending the villagers forward, looking for a castle position to start attacking the eco of Andy and to pull his attention across the map. But already one of his castles in the center is down a second one soon to follow means Andy has free range over all of the gold positions and while the castle does go up forward I think it's not long for this world because there's no mil military left to defend yeah and he's just gonna keep pressuring towards Mr. Yo's base the only good thing for Yo is that Andy doesn't have any more stone coming in but uh, he might opt to just keep buying stone and you see even Yo getting murder holes <laughs> Yo getting murder holes because he wants to try and hold that castle against just how, but his reinforcements are being found. Andy is slaughtering them one by one. Res collected is still kind of insane for Andy. Almost 10k more at this point. Still with the fishing ships and even Kataparuto coming in for Andy. So his trebs unpack almost instantly. That's beautiful tech. He's got Yasuma, he's got Kataparuto. Yo is going into Genitors. It, it's not a good situation. Yeah, the uh, extra mobility of the packing and unpacking faster to reposition can't be understated because of the fact that that is maybe Mr. Yo's one way to stall this game out by removing the siege from mm -hmm. the field. We even saw Arson, Blast Furnace coming in. I mean, those Halberdiers alone could clean up the castle if it weren't for the murder holes that Mr. Yo went for. But just like that, I see the icon from the minimap fall, and that might be enough enough for Mr. Yo to know that this game is lost and the GG is called. That's a phenomenal game from Andy. He 
lost the villagers going out to both ponds in the north and the south. But then when Mr. Yo was distracted by his forward pressure and the good pressure from the archers and the scouts, he went back out there, he snuck the dogs on there, and then he won the contest on both. After that, you add the fish, and the double monastery forward is so deadly to Berbers. Especially if Yo wasn't making scouts before and hasn't teched into light cab. It's so, so tough. And that caught Yo off guard. He was busy with his forward. He couldn't deal with it. And he takes the middle. GG. Yeah, a lot of things done well there by Andy. Obviously finding that early Vil pick, too, with the aggression from the scout. And mm -hmm. even while losing the initial TPD out to mm -hmm. Mr. Yo, he recovers in the Castle Age, wrestles it back. Very important for the Japanese player to have that fishing economy uh, working well in his favor. Uses those extra resources to make it to the Imperial Age and cruise to victory. So it's a 1-0 start here for freaking Andy on Golden Lakes. The first time we've seen that map here at NAC5. But we've got four maps ahead of us, possibly. The home maps here for Freakin' Andy, Arena and Shoals. For Mr. Yo, it's Arabia and Outcrop. Onus is on Mr. Yo to pick where we go next. Yeah, and I think Mr. Yo will just go for something like Outcrop. I think Arabia maybe save that for like a Game 5 situation or something along those lines. Um, <clears throat> could go Shoals as well. I mean, we saw him with Cumans before. I think Hart is probably like the biggest freaking Andy fan right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Hart, Hart's yeah, looking at him. Keep checking yeah, in Hart's him. looking at him like, yeah, let's go Andy. <laughs> and then Leary's sitting there like, but Austria. <laughs> uh, I need you, buddy. Now, thinking about some of the civs, right? I mean, Shoals, you called out. Uh, we do see the Saracens in the draft for Mr. Yo, which is a sieve that many players have used to great effect on I Shoals, think I, freaking I, Andy included. Yeah, I think Yo would be thinking Bohemians or Cumans, though. For uh, ah, for Shoals, and then yesterday. There, there's a choice on Arena. It's like Bohemians or Turks or Cumans. Honestly, he's got three civilizations for that. Super versatile draft for him in yeah. terms of like where the civs could be allocated. And then like Outcrop, you're looking at something like Saracens. Mayans, I think, is a lock for Arabia. Yep. Um, it's it's an interesting draft for sure for Mister Yo because he's got some options. But like I said before. Andy outdrafted him on Golden Lakes, 100%. He had Dravidians, he had Malians, he had Japanese. Mm -hmm. Those are like some of the best hybrid sieves there for Golden Lakes as we watch the replay. Park Ranger, where's your permit, sir? Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. Didn't have one. <laughs> fight, 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 fight. <laughs> Bare knuckle brawling over there on the shores of Golden Lakes. Uh, away we go into game number two. Mr. Yo looking to recover and equalize the series at 1-1. And it will be Arabia that he jumps to. And no surprise, it's the Mayans pick for him in the red against the Malians for freaking Andy in the blue. Malians is decent against Mayans. Like, Malians is, <clears throat> they have their options against Mayans, right? Good cavalry for the Malians. They can also go into the infantry approach, too. They've got a good eco bonus, saving wood on the buildings and their gold coming in a little bit faster and lasting longer, which is beautiful. However, Mayans are Mayans and there's a reason why they have been a standard for Arabia across the years. Yeah, particularly uh, in this kind of a setup. I mean, starting with an extra villager, hey, we love that. Resources lasting longer means uh, you're not so punished if you're pulled off of maybe some resources or lose map control in mm -hmm. certain areas. And then, of course, cheap archers. Now, all that said, cheap archers, we haven't seen archers put, or rather, no. great effect in this no. tournament overall. It is crazy. I was, I was talking with Viper earlier, and we were talking about why Leary isn't really performing, and I said, like, When's the last game you saw someone have a mass of archers in Feudal Age, go up to castle, and then have a mass of crossbows? It just doesn't really happen here in this current meta. We're, we're seeing scouts, we're seeing knights, we're seeing skirms, we're seeing monks. We're not really seeing that archer meta develop. However, Mayans do have other options, notably the eagle. Of course. Yeah, the Eagle's a very, very powerful unit. Great Six for raiding. We've seen Mr. Yo use raiding to its absolute pinnacle. Uh, but yeah, I can't, or rather, I struggle to think of an example of where more than maybe five archers have ever been built in Feudal Age by like any player so far in this tournament. Well, Leary did it on Desert Void. He oh, had, he had the crossbows on You're Desert right. Void. And then, of course, he mixed in camels and kind of stopped making the cross. <laughs> <laughs> there you a little go. Bit. <laughs> there you go. Lumen for both players. Freaking Andy, the first to click to the Feudal Age. An extra villager in the queue for Yo after Loom comes in and now moves out to another wood line. It's a nice map for uh, for Yo in that he has that back gold and he has two back wood lines. The gold forward, the main one, is not is not beautiful. 
it's actually kind of annoying if they push you off of that, but there's an option. And the back wood lens is really what you're looking for here. So he could secure his base quite nicely. Andy, on the other side of the map, he's also got himself an okay back-ish side gold that he doesn't see at the moment, but the uh, wood lines are, are, are also quite nice for him and the berries the berries are quite nice yeah, too. Yeah, unlucky to miss that gold uh, by a tile on either side. Mr. Yo just now, not even moving out to berries yet, by the way. No, he might he might just go for uh, the barracks. He has it early. That's his second Dark Age building. He's adding in the mining camp now. And I don't see any militia being added in, so it's, it's likely to be just an archery range. All righty. 15 seconds separate the two players on the way to the feudal age, waiting to see what the army compositions will be. Wouldn't be surprised to see some scouts come out for Andy once he gets a stable up. It is mm -hmm. a stable. No surprise there. More deer being pushed. Double bit axe as well, just to give a small boost to the eco. And Andy needs to go stables just to secure that, or stable, just to secure that gold, right? If you don't have a safe gold, it's really a risk opening archers, and scouts are very versatile. They give you a lot of mobility. You can hold Yo into his base, and maybe you can pick off some of those archers as they head across the map towards yours. Now, I think Yo is going to be pretty careful with that, and he's going to keep two spearmen alongside the archers at all times. He also has a really defensible base, so he's already getting the walls up and won't really need to worry about the counter raids as he just stretches out for that archer range gem for that mill. Great walling there from Mr. Yo. I love that wall there on the left-hand side, just giving himself a little efficient. bit yeah. of extra room to breathe and, yes, investing very little into making it happen. An archery range soon to fall in here from Andy. Now conservative walling here where he goes on the bottom part of the slope as opposed to trying to get himself a couple more tiles worth of space and actually wall in the gold. Mm -hmm. I think I think he realizes as long as he's tracking the army from Yo and as long as yeah there you ah, go repositions there you go he heard you Dash <laughs> well I think you. no actually it's to your point as soon as he got vision of that eagle didn't see necessarily any military threatening now he feels I mean, permission it, to move in front of that goal it also could have been that he suspected like the the fresh or something right with mm -hmm. two militia coming forward and then you follow up with the archer range so he he got confirmation that nothing like that was happening he goes to the extensive wall and now he is going to try and control the army movements from Mr. Yo. He sees that main gold, has to know that Yo is on a different one because the range is there, and it's right. unlikely that Yo is opening just skirm. And that's just a fortunate generation for Yo to have that secondary gold in the back that he can comfortably take. Yeah, a couple spears already produced here for Mr. Yo. So while there are a couple gaps in the front of the base, it will be hard for those scouts to dive through without taking any damage. So for the time being, freaking Andy will just keep them on the move, keep his opponent tracking and guessing as to where and when he might choose to dive in, looking for damage onto the Eagle Scout, a trade of health between two players, skirmishers coming forward to aid the scouts mm -hmm. against those archers, but a solid mass already here for Mr. Yo. No additional Eagles added yet from Yo, so I think pushing out here is a little bit of a risk mm -hmm. uh, because you don't really have anything to dive for those skirmishers. The Eagles also add a little bit of value against the scouts, but they take a very long time to produce in the Feudal Age as Andy comes forward now. More scouts, more skirms. This is not an army that you can kill your opponent with. This is an army to buy yourself enough time. Unfortunately for Andy, that's exactly what Yo is trying to do. He's just <laughs> trying to buy himself enough time, right, to get all these walls up and to feel extremely secure. The only place in his base that Andy can even punish is this berry patch, but it's only skirms. The yeah. scouts are just going to be busy with the walls. At worst, he's going to make it just slightly less efficient for Mr. Yo to sit on these berries, mm -hmm. maybe force some repairs, but he has to be careful not to lose too much of the scout health to the archers. We have now, Fletching on the way here for Mr. Yo. Does Yo leave with these archers is the question, because he's kind of walled here. It's only scout skirm, and you can see Andy already repositioning the, the skirmishers over the other side, so he suspects maybe there's some sort of aggression from Mr. Yo. Fletching is in. He sees that. He still has eyes on the main army, but Yo loves to sneak out the other side and try and uh, surprise you in your wood line or in your gold or something along those lines. Yeah, I have to imagine Mr. Yo is having the same conversation in his brain. When do I have permission to take these archers, send them forward, look for some damage? For now, happy to play defense and just execute on that eco wheelbarrow barrel coming in now maybe look for the castle age mayans are always happy to rest in the castle age get three tcs up and boom 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 away 
Even going for defensive secondary walls, no. Thinks of it, wants the space, and will bring the archers to support as the villagers come forward to get these houses down. Yeah, it's a race to Castle Age at this point. Like, both players are going to be fully walled. Yo, still producing archers, only out of one range. We don't have any production from Andy. Just Fletching coming in. Market from him. And uh, we're going to have a little bit of time here, Dash, as uh, Andy tries to pressure in, but it's such an easy defense for Mr. Yo. Yeah, we'll race to the Castle Age. That's where market can become superbly important, right? First one to make use of it, gets slightly better prices, maybe accelerates themselves in a way that the other can't. So I'm taking a look at the stone at the top for when that market completes. Will Andy choose to sell in order to get just a little bit more of a boost to the food eco? and make it to the Castle Age in front of his opponent. These are good archer numbers, though, here, Dave. So I'm still wondering if and when Mr. Yo might come forward and look for damage in Feudal. He's going to try and time it. He's going to try and time it for when he gets uh, to Castle Age crossbow and get the crossbow him. and then show up. But Andy knows this. Like Anyone who's, who's played against uh, Yo knows that he's always going to try and sneak that arm in. He's always going to try and hit you exactly uh, when he gets those techs in. So there's the second archer range. There's the Castle Age click up. Andy's not going to be too far behind him. But Mr. Yo is going to attempt to sneak out to the south, or maybe to the north, because he knows the army is there from Andy. He has no idea where the, the scouts or the skirmishers are currently. He saw them like 30 seconds ago, yeah. and he's just trying to get a good idea. Only 15 seconds separates these two players on their way to the Castle Age. We've got the gold mining upgrade now coming in for Mr. Yo as well on top of everything. Two archery ranges that freaking Andy isn't quite aware of just yet in terms of that second one to help with the archer mass and packing a very powerful punch once he reaches the Castle Age can get that crossbow and Bodkin upgrades in, even feeling permission Good to take up. the fight against the skirmishers because of the archer mass, closing the distance. He will clean them up at the cost of a few archer lives, but a fight he's happy to take. Yeah, and now there's no sneakiness involved. Now there's no sneakiness needed. You've cleared up the skirmishers. That's the threat to ambush your archers. You can come over here and comfortably chase away the scouts. And Mr. Yo is going to be pushing forward, and this forward push is going to buy him a ton of time. However, Andy is a minute away from Castle Age. He will have access to knights, and he will have access to building a siege workshop. So Yo needs to be extremely careful with which angle he approaches Andy's base from. It's a, it's a solid defense from both. They read the maps perfectly. They realized they could wall, and now we're going to get ourselves into the Castle Age. Yeah, it's 10 archers on the field starting to roll forward just before Castle Age comes in. 15 seconds to go. We've got repairs on the back house here to keep those scouts out and not take any unnecessary damage. We see some more house walling going up at home for Andy to make it a little bit more difficult to push through those palisade walls. There's the crossbow. There's the bodkin. 30 seconds and counting. Where will Yo end up? It looks like he might be targeting that forward gold position. Yeah, the, the university coming up right away for Mr. Yo as he comes to the forward gold, and Andy did the forward walls, but not quite enough to stop the crossbows or even the archers with fletching, so definitely not the crossbows with Bod Canero, and Andy will need to TC the other gold on the other side. Yo will just keep picking away. There's another wood line, I believe, at the front there, and Andy will go into night production. He's got the mangonels to uh, defend behind his walls. So I don't know if there's that much damage Yo can do. They're just trying to keep each other's armies at home so they can set up their town centers in safety. Yeah, forcing him off the forward gold, forcing him off of one of the wood lines. He's so. repairing the farm. <laughs> Yo, bro. When's the last time we saw that? Andy <laughs> repairing the farm, no waiting way. for the man, you know. Oh, it was a bait the it whole time. It was a bait. That's so five head, dude. It was a bait. He hammers the soil <sighs> with absolute determination until incredible. his friend, the Manganel, comes out. And Yo needs to leave. You love to see it. You love to see it. He finds a little bit of damage onto the crossbows, does eliminate one of them from the map. We've got knights in the queue now for freaking Andy. Already expanded out onto a second TC. You noted that it's all importantly on another gold position because that's what he's in danger of losing. Mr. Yo as well, though, taking that opportunity while he's got pressure forward to drop a second TC on his forward gold position as well to secure it. Yeah, crossbows looping around to the other side. I've never seen someone repair a farm uh, on purpose. Not on purpose. Yeah. Not on purpose. Yeah. Obviously, sometimes you can't right-click it and repair it because they'll start harvesting from it, but right. you have to hit that repair hotkey. 
I've never seen someone repairing a farm under attack in order to wait for a Mangadol to pop out. It's, ev you know, every time I cast AoE 2, I see something new. I was going to say, you would think at this point with a game this old that everything's figured out, that every strategy is no, no, we. Tested, I am convinced <laughs> every year that I cast this game, I am more and more convinced that we know absolutely nothing about this game. That's fair. We're That's learning fair. something new every single year, and that villager goes down trying to repair the cro or the scorpion, rather, against the crossbows. And Mr. Yo making a third TC. Andy also adding a third town center of his own. It's fairly locked down on that Ooh. side, but he still doesn't have access to that stone. He still doesn't have access safely to his main gold at the front. That's 14 crossbows with ballistics. Of course, there is a mangonel here to shove them back as well as a scorpion. But if ever left unchecked, that could be a ton of damage dealt mm -hmm. to the eco. We've got three knights looking to track, but even still, the micro on point for Mr. Yo means that he can get these crossbows out alive. He's not really producing all that that many more. Like, he took a break there to expand his eco, and Andy really limited production, too. He's got uh, one knight in the queue, and that's about it. At Mr. Yo adding a monastery. Villager count, really, really even. Both players with equal eco upgrades. And it just feels like a stalemate that's inevitably going to make its way to Imperial Age. And when do we see the tech switch? Yeah, and so while Andy will find a nice little cleanup here with the Knights on to a small pack of crossbows, I think Mr. Yo will be happy to find those scouts given the fact that he's now going into that monastery, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you're taking away one of the threats and at least going to force more scouts or light cap to be created to deal with the monks that he might bring forward in response to the Knights. But as you mentioned, both players on to three TCs were kind of locked dead even in the eco numbers. Split. The Scorpion tracking the crossbows great hit but it is uphill and ultimately i think the crossbows will be able to micro this one down without losing any lives however at the cost of some health okay oh. mangan out oh. huge hit boom oh and he almost finds a second nice Just shot barely dodged away and now with dwindling numbers here from the crossbows the knights might be able to find their way in still no think a little bit better of it but what a find there for freaking any on the target fire yeah great Perfect attack ground there from Andy. And I think Yo misjudged that a little bit because of the hill. Sometimes you misjudge the range mm -hmm. of the Mangonel. And uh, he just kind of walked right into that one. Here we have the instant replay. Perfect Boom. calculations there from Andy. Hit him right in the middle. And even if Yo splits there, I think Andy still catches a little piece of that army. So it's a wonderful attack ground from him. However, Multiple villagers going down on the gold in the front of Andy's base as Yo tries to micro this Mangonel. At the same time, he's microing against the Knights, and the crossbows die at the back. The crossbows die oh at the front. My goodness, what has gotten into this man? Oh, oh the attack grounds just can't be stopped here on the Mangonels. The Knights get a clean clear up as well on the southern part of his base. Freaking Andy's going to feel good after that one. But again, while he has given himself some room to breathe and can extend back out onto that gold, he has hasn't been to the other side of the map in quite some time. Yeah, that's when you change the inflection on his name after a moment like that. It goes from freaking Andy to freaking Andy. Freaking Andy, man. <laughs> you know, yeah. where are my crossbows? <laughs> that was the control group. Where are they? How does he get away with it? Uh, incredible display there. Uh, Monk looking for a conversion. Might be able to find it before getting cleaned up. Andy now aware, though, that the Monastery is up and that Monks are on the field as a counter to his Knight. We already have one Relic home for Mr. Yo. That'll be nice. A house to try and prevent the Knights from diving into the Eco and wreaking havoc. Definitely something to be concerned about because he doesn't have any TCs at the back of his base, right? So Knights kind of streaming in could become problematic. There's the castle for Yo, and it's not an aggressive castle. Like, it might have been if he still had the crossbows alive and he was hitting Imperial Age and could go Arbalist, but he only has 12 crossbows uh, and still two and a half minutes away from him. So he'll go for the defensive castle first, probably put some more villagers on stone, and then think about a follow-up there. Mr. Yo appears to be playing archer composition rather than the eagles, which, as we spoke about early, pretty rare in NAC5 meta. Yeah, very, very rare, but I think it opens him up for an eagle transition and raiding later in the game, of course. For now, if he can keep the archer mass up, it'll be a good defense against the knights. That's a great castle position on it on a hill, secures both a stone and a gold position for himself. This could be a dangerous moment, though. Andy's been on point with the attack grounds, and Yo says, you know what? I like my massive archers. Back it up. I'm going to keep them. <laughs> I'm going to keep them. 
<laughs> he just wants to distract long enough to get that relic in, and that's going to be Yo's second relic. But yeah, you just got to you got to back it up because you got to get to Imp with something that you can actually upgrade. Now he might not even get the Arbalist upgrade because it looks like he plans on switching into Plumed Archers, and Plumed Archer held can be solid here, right? If we think about what the Malians are going to make later, the only thing you're you're slightly worried about is the uh, the champs girls, the champions with the extra pierce armor. But plumes do get a bonus damage against infantry. Yeah, Andy finally making his way to the Imperial Oh, he age. sneaks right by him, doesn't he? Oh, maybe Andy saw the deer move? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> Andy's trying to attack from a different angle. 2 minutes 15. The crossbows will retreat to the hill, look to have a good position to fire upon the knights. About to hit the Imperial Age. Bracer will be probably an immediate click along with chemistry. I have to imagine. Can't quite afford chemistry just yet because of the food count, but Bracer alone will make the oh, crossbows. Oh, what a great attack I was about to say these crossbows are going to be great against this Mangonel once they get Bracer in, and he still finds a hit even before Does he that save happens. the Mangonel? Oh, he saves the Mangonel at the last second. Beautiful job from Andy. Excellent attack ground on those crossbows. The second castle from Yo, like usually we see the aggressive castles from Yo. Andy's not letting him get away with this. Andy is controlling all the army movement forward, but Yo does have that timing to Imperial Age. He's getting chemistry. He's getting conscription. He's got plumed archers on the field. He's going to have a second castle to produce from, but infantry armor now on the way from Andy. So Andy will attempt to make his way probably into those champs girls, as we call them, the champions with the high pierce armor. Yeah, you called for it, and he will deliver it. Now he comes forward for a hill castle position of his own mm -hmm. from with which to defend his base. Now, of course, he's later to the Imperial Age. He's going for stone walls even, I think, recognizing that he has to defend against some damage first before Ooh. he can get those Champ Skrull numbers up. Also investing into the third armor upgrade for the Knights since that's He's the military that he currently has yeah. on the field. Cavalier as well. So not too much investment into the infantry before yeah. switching gears back into the cavalry. He wants to clean these crossbows up. He only got that first infantry armor. I think he was thinking about it. He didn't add any extra barracks. So he's decided to go into cavalry. He's going to go for Rimba. Uh, Cavalier. Mr. Yo should probably think about this, and once he sees the night numbers, it's an easy tech switch into Halb, especially with the eco that he has, and then just keep adding plumed archers. Elite plumed archer is an expensive tech in terms of food and wood cost. It doesn't cost any gold, but uh, Mr. Yo has 1,500 wood in the bank. He's got plenty of gold to use maybe at the market, and he's got a solid mass of plumes already. Yeah, these are great knight numbers, soon to be Cavalier, and Andy's being very patient before he dives onto the crossbows. All that said, Yo, while he'd be happy to keep the crossbows, has been teching into the plumes, so it's not Ooh. the worst when these go down, although they didn't find any damage. Uh, for their lives. And also, even the plumes now, not in big enough numbers against the Cavalier, will get cleaned up as well. Well, I mean, they have that final armor upgrade, right? Elite Plumed Archer is on the way. That's what Yo was saving for. I think the next priority is definitely the Halberdier tech. I don't, I don't even know if he has Pikeman yet. He's getting Town Patrol, which is uh, very interesting, but could help against the Cavalry raids from Andy. And he needs to get barracks set up, he needs to get halbs, and he needs to make sure that he can hold these positions against the Siege Cavalier push from Andy as chemistry comes in now. And the second infantry armor. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, exactly. Second uh, infantry armor here for freaking Andy. No infantry upgrades at all for Mr. Yo, mm -hmm. so not even close to being able to build the counter unit here to these Cavaliers. <laughs> Yo's like, come on in. I've got 18 plumes, elite Great. plumes, just sitting here. My castle is over on the side. I got more plumes coming in, and Andy, that's not a fight that you want to take with those Cavalier. No, not at all. Ill-advised, and he does run with the remaining four Cavalier, but that's a great pocket position there for Mr. Yo to find, and the plume numbers are building. He's got 30 on the field with 15 in the queue out of three castles, and a fourth castle going up as we speak on another hill position. So it's still a solid map control here in the end for Mr. Yo. Andy now reaching out for his second castle of the game. Andy's in a super tough position. Like, plumed archers are really tough to get going, but once you get them into a mass of 40, 50, and then you can start comfortably adding halves uh, behind them, or in front of them, rather, it's really, really dangerous. Even if he mixes in a champ girl, like Onager or something like that, we saw ballistics come in for him, so maybe thinking even skirm with Malians, which isn't the greatest. It's going to be really easy for Yo to defend these positions, and that's his fifth castle 
along the center of the map. So all those neutral resources in Yo's favor. Yeah. Three relics in Yo's favor. Guilds coming in. Final farming upgrade coming in. Masonry coming in. Final stone mining upgrade coming in. Like Yo is feeling extremely comfortable here. Feeling very comfortable, but also in it for the long haul if that's what it's going to require. All right, Andy now with the Cavalier out in front is going to come back and look for this castle position. Plumes. But the plume plumes. numbers just doubled here on our Disgusting. screens as reinforcements arrive. And now Mr. Yo is coming forward with villagers to look for that stone <laughs> position for himself. We do have one Mangonel, but it's only a Mangonel at this into elite plumed archers. The archers are already spread out just a bit, so I'm not sure how much damage they're ultimately going to be able to find. Andy just trying to buy himself enough time to get this castle up. Yes, the Cavalier are eliminating a mm -hmm. huge number of these plumes, and that will be good for him in the end. I do think this castle goes up. We can check on the percentage, because while Mr. Yo was trying to target a number of the villas, still six remain. Ah, uh, this is what he was doing. I was wondering where he was distracted, because he wasn't microing the villagers down or pulling the plumes away. He's in the back of Andy's base, and plumed archers, I mean, they're, they're extremely tanky. Uh, as far as archers go, they have the mobility. They have uh, the five range, uh, base range with the elite upgrade now. So they're really, really great in a situation where you can raid at the back and then take fights at the front. Also, they're extremely fast to produce and they're very cheap too. Yeah. These uh, plumed archers will find as much damage as they can before they go down to the cavalier that had to come back to respond, as well as the bombard cannons mm -hmm. that were committed to that cleanup. He can make these all day, dude. Also, how about this? A sixth castle in that massive defensive castle line, and yet on another hill. Perfect positioning for these trebs to come forward and try and deal with the castle of freaking Andy. I think that's where a lot of our focus will be, as both players have brought trebs that way. The forward gold position, though, once again under threat here for freaking Andy. I gotta wonder how much gold he'll have available to him if he can never get back onto that how spot. Do you, how do you approach this if you're Andy? Like, this is like Fortress Arabia here. This is like the Maginot line right through the center. <laughs> of the, they're all on hills, too. And then you, you got Yo just casually, 2,000 food in the bank. I mean, just get how well you can or something like that. But Yo decides he's only going to make plumes. And Andy is going to have to respond to that. He's sniping down the Bombard Cannons. The Cavalier are coming in with Farimba. Really, really solid attack on those. Yo might lose this castle, but I mean, he can afford to. He's got five others behind it. Yeah. And he's got enough stone for another one, too. Masonry just completed here for freaking Andy. It will help him hold this hill position. And those Bombard Cannons, I think, are the key to the battle eliminating the Trebs on the side of Mr. Yo while the Cavaliers swoop in to eliminate the Elite Plumes. You're exactly right that I assume this castle position will fall in due time here for Mr. Yo, but he's got plenty of other defensive di uh, positions to fall back to. And while Freak Andy might gain some ground, I still have questions about the long-term viability of his resources because of the map control that Mr. Yo had. That? And I see more huh? Elite Plumes, more Elite poo huh? Plumes streaming into his base. We're going to have to check back on Freaking Andy's eco as the castle goes down for Mr. Yo. No, 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 let's not check back on that. There's too many dead. <laughs> There's too much dead. There's too much death in there. The farmers are all Ooh. going down. We've got Bombard Cannons attempting to shoot down the plumes, but they don't one-shot these things. So Yo can just run in and snipe these Bombard Cannons. He splits into the shot. That was wonderful uh, attack rounds there from Andy as he gets some more value. But the plumes in the back of the base are going to be devastating. Andy struggling to keep more than 30 villagers on the farms. His gold count is extremely low. Only four on gold, and he's only got one relic, too. So Mr. Yo still controlling the game. He goes for another castle. This one a little bit safer as his castle in the south is now being trebbed. Yeah, castle in the south being trebbed, and I don't think will be too long for this world. That's another gold position that Andy can free up for himself, and all mm -hmm. importantly so, because once again, he struggled to get on the main gold back at home. All right, Elite Plumes are finally dying to the town. Finally, centers. finally, finally, infantry upgrades for Mr. Yo. <laughs> All right, we get what we asked for just 15 minutes later. Mr. Yo says, okay, you're going to force me to tech switch to end this game. I guess I will do so. Trying to defend this castle position with repairs as long as he possibly can, but doesn't have the military there to support it. I saw another castle position go up in the mm -hmm. north here for Mr. Yo, so keeping those numbers up. Ooh, Cavalier. that's the hoarding's castle. 
That's the Hoardings Castle. It could use Hoardings right now. You're going to have to try and keep it alive no long enough no for the tech to come in. No stone for Mr. Yo. He's trying to snipe the bomber, Kenny. He gets two of them, but the Trebs are still working away. He invested his stone into that castle in the north, and Hoardings will not complete on time. Those trebuchets will take out the castle first. Forging on the way. I saw the Pikeman upgrade come in. He's still got plenty of resources, and he's still raiding the base of Andy, but Andy is sitting at a solid 127 villagers, and he's replaced the farms that he lost before Andy is doing a wonderful job. And look at him in the bottom corner there, completely just like stretching out into these neutral areas. Yeah, we're kind of splitting the map 50-50 between these players. Andy with a 20 villager lead in the face of a 68 to 9 eco KD. Mm -hmm. Yo has done a lot of work to get those villagers off the map, but they're being created as quickly as they're falling. And so it's just about getting those villagers back onto food. No food in the bank here for Andy, and if he wants to keep the cavalry producing, that's what he'll need. Gets pushed off of this castle positioning just for a moment with the massive elite plumes rotating around to this side. More of those infantry upgrades now coming in for Mr. Yo, and Halbadir just completed. I don't know if he's shown any of that yet, so Andy may be surprised in the end if a mass is built up and a singular push could spell the end I, I of the think, game. I think Andy's surprised he didn't see help about yeah. 10 minutes ago. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's just kind of like, is this guy playing with his food right now? Like, what is going on? And, and I bet if I asked Yo, like, why didn't you make help earlier? He's like, plumes are fun. I, I, I feel like I haven't been in a situation where I've been able to make 50, 60 plumed archers in a, in a very long time. Siege Ram even coming in for Mr. Yo. The economy for him still looking fairly strong at 108 villagers, which the Mayans can thrive on exactly. and put more of their population into the army as Andy once again gets hit on that gold. He's never done anything to lock that down. It's been all game since Feudal Age he's being hit on that. Yeah, extraordinarily difficult for him to hold on to that gold. He does have a Bombard Ganon there to respond, but we see more red dots flooding into the back of his base. By the same token, over on the southern side, he hasn't been able to get back to this castle position, and we have capped rams on the way. Siege ram, mm -hmm. 10 seconds away as well. Deletes the castle position, abandons it, full sail. So Andy sees the, the halbs, he goes into skirm. Skirm without bracer, not the greatest option against plumed archers. Like, they kind of even out, right? Like, elite plumed archers are really, really solid, and they're really, really cheap, so skirms don't even feel the greatest against them. But against the halberdiers, you're going to need something. I don't think Annie's in a position to tech into the champ skulls at all, especially against plumes, which get the bonus damage, the plus two bonus damage against them, um, which kind of, you know, goes over top of the additional armor. So you're doing decent damage output with these unique units as Yo dives in now. Yeah, Yo's diving in. Andy's committing a lot of villagers towards getting that castle position up and getting himself back onto gold because he has zero villagers working on that all-important resource. The dive under the castle here for Mr. Yo to find the Bombard Cannons, cleans them up, and now we'll look to turn tail and run, save the remaining plume lives as he's eliminated the siege units. Plumed archers are just so cheap. Like, Yo can do this all day. You you look at how much gold he still has access to. 80 military. A exactly. And that's the Mayans. That is the Mayan privilege, as we say. It's 103 villagers, and he's looking. He's always floating resources. It's crazy. Yeah. So this plumed archer composition is crazy. I think there's more siege workshops for it as the plumed archers run in again. Only 14 villagers killed this entire game by Andy, and I think most of those were, like, repairing castles. I don't think he's gotten into Yo's eco really once this yeah, game. Absolutely. It's near full cavalry here for freaking Andy. Yes, those elite skirmisher numbers are starting to build, but as you said, without Bracer, not that effective. Trips. With the siege workshop, or no, the siege rams as well, target fires are going to have to be on point here from the skirmishers to make sure that they're targeting the priority units. So splitting here the military units from freaking Andy to make sure the siege units go down, but he loses both trebs in the process to the siege ram. Can fall back to the safety of the castle on the hill, but even still, we've got plumes just running running through the back of his eco, looking for damage here and there. The food count just isn't where he wants it to be. He's struggling, struggling to push these forces back. How can the food count be where he wants it to be when that the screen we just looked at in Andy's base used to all be farms? And now it is a complete barren wasteland that Yo is completely ruined with the Plumed Archer raids. He keeps coming in over and over and over again. 83 military for Mr. Yo, 37 for Andy as Yo pushes in with the siege rams. Andy desperately trying to farm in the south. Yo could easily run in there with more plumes if Andy's distracted. And the halberdier number is really solid at 29 with full upgrades now 
So Andy pushing this back is going to be almost impossible. Pop cap for Mr. Yo, mm -hmm. 90 military. He almost has more military than he has of villagers at this point. Andy is absolutely strapped for resources and can't quite find his way in to protect this castle. Looks like it will go down in the end, and that's going to kind of open an avenue of attack here for Yo that wasn't available to him before. More siege rams streaming forward, plenty of elite plumes on the field, more halberdiers arriving to the fight as we speak, even one siege ram sneaking into the back of the base as well to start to deal with the TCs. This looks like a winning fight here for Mr. Yo and a possible push to the end. It's like this composition, if you're in Andy's position, you're trying to push this back. It feels like it's doable because plumes aren't that strong. Halbs, you have a potential counter in the skirmishers, but there's just so many, right? Like, he, it, Yo can have 60 military here, and then he's got another 20 in the back of your base mm -hmm. on the right corner there. So and you have to commit everything it, to this Exactly, fight. exactly. You don't have it, the amount of resources you need to allocate or the amount of production buildings or units on the field to allocate to both sides. So Yo is always going to win that late game battle as Andy tries to push out the skirmishers. Plume's still doing decently against those, especially without that final armor upgrade in from Andy. And... He's trying, he's really trying. He's back up to 65 on food, which is super impressive considering he's lost all of his main base. But Yo is inevitably just taking out castle after castle. Back up to 65 on food, but now falling below 30 military for the first time in a while. And it is all trash units for the time being. It's, a, it's great survivability for Mandy. Like honestly, he's, put, he's putting on a show on how to live, but <laughs> Sometimes surviving, living not just thriving. isn't surviving, enough. Surviving, not thriving. Exactly. Game number yeah. two. Sometimes li I feel like I'm a, I'm a Hallmark card or something, <laughs> you know? Enjoy every moment. <laughs> <laughs> to be alive exactly. is, is the greatest joy. <laughs> the plumes are pushing in again. The halves are there. The skirmishers are it's something that Yo's not even that concerned about. Like, they'll take out his halves, but it takes a while for them to kill the plumes. He can sit on the hill. He can take care of the farms that Andy has so carefully set up on this side. Andy's taking Andy's main gold in his base. Yeah, just look at the populations, and that's about all you need to know to see the, or to, to tell the tale of this game. You've got a pop cap here for Mr. Yo. Andy continues to fall. What was 150 is now down to 128 in total, falling below 100 villagers himself for the first time, and he does not have the Mayan privilege, mm -hmm. right? He needs to be up around that 120 villager mark in order to keep the production up. Another castle on the left side being rammed down, I believe, too. That's sappers. It's just yeah, sappers. It makes the villagers more effective against the rams, and it's cheaper now than it used to be. Okay. So well, that's last. that's a nice little tech from Andy. It only costs wooden food. Only costs wooden food, but will it be enough? It's a cheeky little play to make the villagers that much more effective in defense. But even still, we see that population dropping. We see how Yo continues to pick his opponent apart. Piece they kill those rams piece. pretty quick, actually. They I'm do. surprised. I, I haven't tested it out. I was actually thinking about Sappers yesterday in that arena game, Tato versus uh, Hera, mm -hmm. as we see Yo still trying to work away on these castles, and it's, it feels inevitable at this point. But uh, I, I was thinking, how effective would Sappers be there? Burgundians, one of the only civs in the game that does not get access to Sappers. Yeah, Mayans are, to your point, an inevitability, it feels mm -hmm. like uh, at this point, and that's maybe what Mr. Yo is saying, and the GG will be called as freaking Andy realizes there's no source of recourse here in game number two. We're all tied up at one and one. No source of recourse. Now that is an album name. <laughs> I am about to drop the hottest <laughs> mixtape. No source of recourse. We've got TPD. Yeah. And no source of, yeah. Triple Pond Domination could be a band name too. Oh, that would be dope, right. dude. All right, 1-1. One, one. Yeah, 1-1. One, one. What a fight there from Mr. Yo. Great understanding of the map. Uh, playing one of his all-time favorite civs in the Mayans. He has still one of his other all-time favorite civs available to him still in this draft as well, the Cumans. Oh boy, and and the question was, where is he using Cumans? Because I, when I talked about Viper and Andy discussing the draft, they said, you know, Vi Viper said, oh, he's using Cumans on Arena. And then Andy's like, I think he's going to use it on Shoals. And then <laughs> Viper's like, you know, he might use it on Outcrop. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so exactly. it's, a, it's a question mark, right? But then you have to look at his other civilizations. He's got Bohemians, Cumans, Turks, all available for Arena. You That's why think. I think humans don't go on arena, right? Because mm. you're going to have to play one of exactly. Bohemians or Turks. And you can't really play Turks on, like, Shoals or Outcrop. Mm -hmm. So it's Bohemians on, on or Cumans on Shoals. Yes. And then 
you could potentially use cumins on outcrops. So maybe it's Bohemian Shoals, Turks Arena, and then um, uh, cumins on outcrop. But the next map is going to be Arena. Burgundian's available for Andy, and that feels like a guarantee. the only pick here. Maybe Britain there's a surprise? there's a Britain surprise. I mean, maybe there's a chance he goes Britons, but Britons. They're not what they used to be. They really aren't. I mean, it's a dream of mine, but it won't Turks. be realized here. So it's the Burgundians here for freaking Andy as we dive on to Arena and the Turks is the response here. from Mr. Classic Joe. matchup. Classic Arena meta matchup. Now, Turks, they're very, very good if you go for the uh, standard Monk contest with the Light Cav because they get that upgrade free, right? Their gold comes in faster too, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. But Burgundians are also good on that meta as well. So we'll see if Yo decides to go for a forward castle drop or maybe Janissary production or maybe the light cav monk approach. Yeah, I think the proximity of the bases is very important to that decision, mm -hmm. right? Because when we spoke to Jordan about his matchup where he played Turks, <laughs> yeah, sure. it was when he realized yeah. how close his He's opponent like, was. He's like, oh, I guess no like, castle drop. I must go forward. Yeah. It, it is demanded at this point. But let's uh, remind ourselves why the Burgundians are such a favorite pick here on Arena. Of course, the main thing we'll focus on is the fact that they have economic upgrades available to them one age earlier. So very quickly will we see freaking Andy reach for double bid axe, horse collar to boost the economy and start to gain the advantage in the resource collected department. Uh, on the uh, as well as that, of course, I mean gunpowder units. If you get there, are going to be stronger in the end. Upgrades costing less for the economy as well, and then relics generating yep. both gold and food is massive when it comes to the the battle for the relics in the castle age. And as I spoke about before, we have the Turks with the Janissary. Everyone knows that unit really, really strong. Even though it got nerfed uh, with the range recently. Also, late game artillery getting that plus two range for your uh, bombard towers and your bombard cannons is huge. Uh, Sapahi with the Cav Archers, maybe we could see something along those lines. But basically what's going to help you out early is that gold is <laughs> surviving, not <laughs> thriving. That's our that's our <laughs> Christmas card. <laughs> that was, I mean, honestly, 2023 is pretty Bro, accurate. <laughs> how many how many fridges would that be on? So many. If we were to tell you the number, you wouldn't even be able to understand it. it oh, so my cursed. God. I love it. <laughs> anyway, the uh, the what are we talking about again? The light cap upgrade comes in for yes. free. <laughs> um, for the Turks, which makes them really, really solid in the Monk Wars in the center. However, with Burgundians, uh, Light Cav is cheaper. Mm. And uh, the Eco upgrades also. So it's kind of, you know, you're, you're going to get there around the same time. Maybe Turks are in Castle Age 30 seconds faster or something like that. But still, it feels like nowadays, especially with the Nineville start, you're angling towards something having to do with a Castle Drop or with the Janissaries. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, still haven't seen the scouts move outside the walls. So once again, when we talk about the importance of that scouting, at least for the proximity of each other, to maybe affect what the Turk player is going to do in terms of their approach to the game. It's actually freaking Andy who will be the first out onto the map to start to scout for those relic positions. Well, he's going to be happy with this scouting because we were yeah. talking about, we were watching uh, the arena game yesterday uh, against Jordan, and, and he just... He just threaded the needle oh, in between yeah. all of the relics. Well, now there. hold on. Has he seen a relic yet? Sorry, go back to. He has well, I mean, he's. he's <laughs> I know. I'm just saying. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> don't speak too soon. Hasn't found a relic yet with that scout. All right. So Yo is going on to stone. Okay. So we're not going to see the light cav monk contest. We'll just see Yo go on to stone, and then the decision is: Does he go forward with that, or does he start? with the Janissaries at home, and then look to place a second castle a little bit more forward. Feudal Age on the way for the Turk player, but it's not a surprise that the Burgundians will be behind that because of the investment into double bit axe. No horse collar just yet for Free Andy, going for the gold mining upgrade in front of it, in fact. Yeah, and Andy has discovered the relics now. I there think he go. sees two. Ah, well now he's unstoppable. And these are these are really fair, fairly generated relics. We've That's got one one closer to Yo, one closer to Andy, one kind of in the middle but closer to Yo, and then one kind of in the middle and closer to Andy, and then one exactly on the dot in the middle of the map. So beautiful relic generation, pretty fair for both. I think they'll both be happy with that. Yeah, without a doubt, one of the fairest of generations here on Arena that we've seen. And Yo is just coming out to scout. He wants to keep the scout alive for the uh, the point at which he reaches Castle Age and it upgrades automatically to a light cap. You don't want to lose your scout early with Turks. And he would be perfectly happy to um, 
to take a lot of HP off of that or to kill it early. That would be his dream. All right, well, Barracks already on the field here for Andy. Feudal Age just arriving now for Mr. Yo. Expect to see that market looking for the blacksmith before he can make his way up to the Castle Age. And Yo is now transitioning a few more villagers onto the stone. He's gone for the blacksmith market, of course. He might even add a barracks if he wants to go forward for that castle. You need some spearmen to support, right? And I haven't seen Loom come in for him, which is, uh, I think, a little bit telling. So he might just go for that castle at home. Andy going for the market stable. That doesn't surprise me. You want those scouts on the field to control the monks of your opponent. You also want them to control that potential castle forward, right? Even if you can stall out the castle foundation, until you get monks of your own on there or dance around or force your opponent to put a castle a little bit further back from your wall, scouts are a great option. Yeah, we've got that stable dropped here for the Burgundian player. Now, didn't have 250 gold when he clicked castle here for Mr. Yo, and so would have delayed his own castle timing if he mm -hmm. opted for that loom click. On his way to castle age now, being the first player to get there, might still feel empowered to move outside his walls to drop that castle. However, again, after talking to a majority of pros, unless you're guaranteed to really get an advantageous position with that initial castle for Turks. Yeah. It sounds like the safer option is just to drop it safely at home and start to build the Janus mass there, if anything. Can Yo spot the gold from Andy there is, w is what I wonder. He can't see it. Okay, so he doesn't know that he would need to pressure over on that side, but there is a stone there, which is important to deny, of course. And um, he does see a lot of open area that will be difficult for Andy to defend behind. Andy, going for the walls behind or sorry the houses behind his walls to add a little bit of extra defense and even the way he set up his barracks his stable and his market means that if yo breaks through he can wall behind in a pinch and keep his his uh, economy safe yeah 20 more seconds to go and 100 stone until we get our answer about this castle position here for mr yo uh, but freaking andy is already marking one of those gates as i say that he actually retreats we oh, he takes engagement. the fight, but Yo just gets the castle age. So Andy, yeah, Andy's like, okay, need to back it up here. He's bringing a second one, though, and that's one advantage of adding the scouts in early. Remember, scouts are a little bit faster than the light cav. You can see 1.55 on the scouts. I believe it's 1.50 exactly. on the light cav. So they are going to be able to catch up, and Yo needs to retreat. As the castle goes up defensively, makes it in the corner so he can conveniently delete the walls and just send the Janissaries out, or garrison stuff back in. I don't see a follow-up monastery from Yo, so maybe it's even extra town centers behind this. Maybe it just goes castle, some Janissary pressure, and then booms. Yeah. Could Speaking be of extra town centers, that's where Andy is going to go first, to a second town center over there on a wood line and gold for himself. Try and extend what would be a phenomenal eco-advantage for the Burgundians in the long term. Okay, so how many Janissaries? Is he... Five. Is he you think it's just limited production, and then he tries to go for a castle, maybe try and hit that Imperial Age timing? Yeah, I think it's like a maximum okay. of five. Okay. Um, just because he went for such a safe position here, I think you go Imperial and then look for a second castle forward. Right? Okay. So maybe contest with a monk Still six two. on stone. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Still a really solid villager count on stone as the Janissaries come out. The problem with making Janissaries is they cost food. And the cost gold. So that's taking away from your Imperial Age stockpile. And it's really, really tough to get up to the next age when you're one town center only. You're only on 32 villagers. You've got eight on food currently. And you're making a food-based unit. Even with the help of the market, it's going to be extremely difficult. So Yo is just trying to distract these light cab at the moment. He's going to try and grab some of those relics. He goes right through the Jeez. middle and then uses the wolf as a block. Mr. He Yo. Just, he just nutmegged. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Poor light cab. <laughs> Not, and he pulls them back to the Janissary. So well done there from Yo. Having that light cab alive is really valuable. Monks are a good defense against Janissaries because they have additional range. Um, on this unit, and Janissaries miss. I mean, if they're in my hands, they miss every single bullet that they fire. But having that light cap to snipe the monks is super important. And yo, 
grabs that first relic. Yeah, already incorrect in my prediction. It is six Janissaries on the field at the moment. First relic on the way back home. So it's great to deny that. I think the important thing to recognize here is the margin for error that the Turk player has in sticking onto one mm -hmm. TC, right? Mm -hmm. Versus the Burgundians, who is, again, going to continue to build that eco lead over the long run and perhaps just be able to overwhelm you later in the game. Oh, you got to get it done. You got to get it done early. Uh, there's very rare cases, which we saw yesterday from Hera, where you can YOLO and then drag it out, but that's only in the craziest of games. Yo is going to have to get something done before the eco from Andy really starts to come into play here. As Yo tries to collect another relic, he's already gotten one in the monastery, which is going to help him out a little bit if he wants to go to Imperial Age. And he almost has enough stone to make a second castle. Yeah, and enough military presence, I think, where he could come forward and look for a solid castle position, already grabbing another one of those relics, and it was one favored towards freaking Andy, and this is exactly what we were talking about with that extra stone in the bank. Here comes the forward castle drop. Now it's Oh, not he doesn't have loom, dude. Ooh! <laughs> Luckily! But it's fine, it's fine. Yo doesn't panic, it's okay. Yeah, luckily the Janissaries and the Light Cav are there just in time to play defense. But I think it is interesting, while still a solid castle position controlling the center of the map, it didn't go to deny that gold that he wasn't able mm -hmm. to scout earlier, the stone or the wood line. I think it's better, it, it's better at the front, number one, because it's closer to your other castle. So you have a little area that's not safe in between rather than like a huge gap. Yeah. It's also better there because there's a wide expanse of walls. And Andy, it's easier for him to wall from the wood line to something than to just cover this entire huge area at the front. So Yo is going to try and break through the wall here. His resources are actually looking okay now that he stopped queuing up Janissaries, and now that he's got three relics generating yeah. gold. I mean, honestly. Uh, Ooh. I don't think he can snipe that monk. I think the cav is too close. Or husbandry it would take is in two though. Hits, I think, from husbandry's that in though for Andy, and Andy doesn't well, go after the monk. Either way, Andy's not going to entertain the idea of sniping that monk, and mm -hmm. will let the relic. Hey, go. look! They found something they can actually hit. Let's go! A wall right in front of their face. Hard to miss. Imagine. <laughs> what if in that moment? <laughs> Just like one goes straight. No, through. they they still are. <laughs> like, oh, I did uh, see the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right Some there. of them are still missing. Less Absolute stormtrooper <laughs> aim there. Okay, Loom coming in finally here for Mr. Yo and approaching Imperial Age resources using the light cap to scout ahead. Does see the presence of four monks there, so he's going to back up just a little bit to the safety of that castle. Loom. Imperial Age now uh, on the way here for Andy, and so or for Mr. Yo rather, three minutes away from being able to push forward with that immediate chemistry. And he coming makes in. he makes a barracks, which is an interesting uh, building to make here. You you. you have the castles to make Janissaries, so you don't really need an archer range to make the hand cannons. So you're probably going for a stable here to make more light cav to snipe the monks that you think Andy will go in defense. Good conversions there from Andy as, mu as the monks are being sniped by Mr. Yo, but he has gotten himself quite a few Janissaries and he's managed to stop the push into his economy at the price of like three monks in a ville. No, we talked about the margin for error of this Turk player sitting on one TC, and that feels like a bit of an overreach when you're already on the way to the Imperial Age, right? Tossing away just a few of the military units that you had. There's that stable that you were talking about in response to the monks. Mm -hmm. We just have the Imperial Age now coming in for freaking Andy, so three minutes to go, a minute and 40 seconds behind. But he how has you, a lot of villagers working for him. Even with the free Hussar upgrade, how are you ever going to afford Hussar on this eco? I guess he has 17 on... I, I mean, that is the cleanest YOLO eco yeah. that, that we've seen on Arena. If you're going to go 1TC, that's beautiful if in terms of 1TC. But it's still going to be tough to make Janissaries to get your upgrades and to go Hussar at the same time. Right. I imagine first couple units out of the castles are two trebs at the very least. Mm. We haven't seen the Siege Workshop yet for the Bombard Cannons that I would expect to see out of the Turks. And so, yeah, one stable production, I think very sustainable on yeah, the 17 food that we're talking about there. Even just two Hussar could add so much value here. So right. maybe that's an excellent call out there 
from Mr. Yo. Still only one on stone, so the follow-up castle not really going to happen for him. But the Trebs can come out as he hits Imperial Age. Andy's still a minute and 30 seconds away. Andy is very wisely not going up in that forward-facing town center either. I think he's going up in the one at the very back of his economy. Yeah, struggling for a little bit of wood is Yo. So only one trebuchet able to be produced at a time. But at the very least, he can use the second castle for Janissaries. Loses three of his Janissaries. Hussar going on big the here. Hunt, but there it is. Huge snipes onto the monks, while three of the Janissaries will go to the other side and quickly fall to the ground. Cavalier upgrade coming in for Andy. Another castle going up defensively. How many stables are there for Andy? The only one? Is there only one stable and he's already teching the Cavalier? Like, Andy is under a lot of pressure. He's adding two more stables behind this, but the Janissaries are now cutting off that gold. The secondary gold for Andy is a little bit to the north there, and that's quite exposing. You can see him looping out. He's going to try and hide his gold income from Mr. Yo as Yo is working away at that TC. I think if you were to ask Yo, he would hope that he could snipe the Imperial Age TC, but he's a little bit too late here. As Andy gets to Imp, he goes for block printing, hand cart, and uh, the Cavalier upgrade is about to be in. Yeah, now block printing, obviously going to extend the range of those monks, make them more effective in finding conversions. But the trebuchet still working away on the TC before it'll roll forward and start to target the castle as well. Wheelbarrow coming in at home for Mr. Yo just to boost the eco a little bit. Second trebuchet on the field. And now we see a siege workshop here for our Turk player. Yeah, siege workshop into bomber cannons. The eco is still really, really bad in terms of uh, comparing to Andy's economy. However, he does have five relics, and now he's buying some additional wood. Andy going for a forward castle on Mr. Yo. However, I think that's mostly to just secure that gold. And it looks like it might be scouted. At the very least, that Hussar did catch the villager who's starting to go forward. The rest of these villagers are spotted as well. With that one Janissary there and the Hussar winning out in the battle, I think all these villagers go down Ooh. and that castle's not going up. Yeah, and he tried to be sneaky there. He was denied off his main gold for a while. He's still taking that now. He's kind of being uh, pressured near his secondary gold and he knows that he needs other options, but he's not gonna get away with that forward castle. Yeah, now remember everybody, it is a very, very precarious position that Yo is in. If he loses his military on the front, he's under threat of being pushed immediately back because of the stronger eco here for the Burgundian player, near double the number of villagers in total. But all that said, the push looks strong here for Mr. Yo. Two trebuchets at his disposal. Now a bombard cannon on the field. And I and don't believe redemption is in even for those block printing monks. No, and you know what? He, he didn't need it yet because there was nothing to convert. It was trebuchets only for Yo. I love the fact he's taking out these stables. He's going to force Andy to make more stables behind. He's really going to cut... Um, the production from him, but the Cavalier are coming in, and we're both squinting at the screen here, figuring out who's going to win this battle. Yo's got a phenomenal spot to sit on the other side of that gold. The Janissaries are putting out so much damage, and the Cavalier don't feel like they have enough numbers to take care of this, or do they? There's only four Janissaries left, so Andy manages to clear up that Janissary army, and he might push forward and take out the Trebs and the Bomber Cannons. Now, this could be a turning moment, everybody. It's only five Cavalier left as Yo tries to mount the defense and keep his trebuchets alive. The first one will fall. The second one now being targeted. Even the Bombard Cannon has to retreat back towards the castle. And in the end, with that one villager repairing, will he keep the Treb nope. alive? No, the retarget comes through for Andy. And the castle was busy attacking the wall. <laughs> so... There you go, a little misclick from Andy earlier, or maybe the castle automatically targeted that wall after taking out the first one, but uh, didn't get much value from that on the Cavalier. Excellent quick walls here from Andy. Of course, there's Janissaries behind that, so he's still gonna lose some villagers. And important to note that behind this push, about a minute ago, Yo added two additional town centers. So Yo is gonna start expanding his eco a little bit, still has those five relics. Resources collected is only, only 5K behind, which is actually a pretty good state Impressive, yeah. uh, for this game. And he's still got some bomber cannons and now a monk to help out against Cavalier Janissary production is still happening from both of those castles too. Yeah, you love to see him indexing into that contingency plan of the extra TCs in case this game extends too much longer. 
But by the same token, I recheck in with those military numbers up at the top of your screen. And Andy, it's still you Mr. Yo with the initiative. Exactly. Andy lost the two stables because Yo trebbed them down, right? And it, that really hurt his production. He had to add more. He lost the Cavalier coming in for the Trebs. He's trying to run with the Villagers as Yo tries to snipe the Trebuchet. I think he'll get it before those bomber cannons come down. But there's four units targeted for conversion. He gets both of the Cavalier and manages to save the Bombard cannons. Beautiful play there for Mr. Yo. He's raiding a little bit in the back with a Hussar. He's got Janissary numbers. Solid amount with 14 protecting his siege now. And the Devotion Monastery might even die before the research comes in. Yeah, you can see how desperate Andy is to get himself onto gold as he's pushed off of that extra gold just outside of his walls. He jumps for a TC way out into the middle of the map. So that might be his source of recourse for at least the time being to get the Cavalier numbers up in the end. But still, he's getting locked into his base. He's running out of room. He's scared. Oh, he's, he's so scared to come in for this be. because Yo has been getting the conversions. But now he dives here. Maybe he thought he got Devotion. Village. He probably thought he got Devotion before that monastery went down, and he does manage to snipe some monks. The villagers are coming forward, trying to attack the Bombard Cannons. Yo, trying to repair the Bombard Cannons. And he gets one. No, he doesn't get one. They're both still alive. Yo is repairing the Janissaries. They're defending. The Cavalier are there. Who on earth comes out on top after this? Yeah, the numbers are still looking OK here for Andy in terms of the Cavalier, but the snipes weren't found onto the Bombard Cannons. And so now back under the castle. Castle still targeting walls, though, Dave. That actually could become crucial in the end. It's absolutely devastating. Yo could have killed so many Cavalier with that castle. Instead, there he, goes, he just notices now and retargets it. And that means that Andy, because of the delay, will get three Bombard Cannons. Andy also going for a town center in the north there and making another one on the secondary gold. Uh-oh, Dave. Did we just see the turning point? We might Finally, have. Finally, some room to breathe here for Andy as the military is all cleaned up on front. Both players working with scraps when it comes to those military units. But then I go back to the eco counts, and it's a 30 villager lead here for Andy. If he can get them working efficiently once mm -hmm. again, that might be his recipe for success. Yeah, still the five relics for Mr. Yo. More bomber cannons being added, but it looked like such a great push from, from Yo. Andy doing an excellent job sending the villagers out and just kind of YOLOing everything, making sure that he killed that army and then the castle. I mean, if there is a most valuable castle, that might be the least valuable castle. It was attacking the wall for so long as Yo goes for a forward castle over on this side. Andy's going to spot that. He's going to go for a defensive castle of his own. Yo gets a couple conversions over in Andy's economy. But we have a castle versus castle battle in the north. Who gets the castle up first? Is it going to be Yo or is it going to be Andy? Nice defense from Yo. Yeah, some Cavalier thrown away there uh, by Andy as he's probably more focused on this castle battle here on the right-hand side, using villagers to delay the castle build of Mr. Yo, but Mr. Yo still winning that battle in the end. I want to check the percentages on those castles because I do believe both of them will go up even while Andy might lose a couple bill lives. Two Cavalier arriving just before it does go up, 95, 96. Uh, and I Andy shook his head a little bit there. I don't know if you saw that. He's like, oh, God, I was so close, right? One second sooner, I send those Cavalier over. Cassilia gets converted now. That was a little bit of yo conversion as Andy is trying to send reinforcements forward. Andy... 104 villagers. Yo, 67 villagers. Yo actually has more on food, which is impressive at this point. He's still trying to create the Janissaries, and there's still a deadly army composition. Can't afford the elite version, but 15 of them with bomber cannons and some monks added in. Pretty solid, as the trebuchet now needs to get out of the range of Yo's castle. He doesn't even have fletching, so he can't even range it over by that town center there. Yo is thinking about pushing again. Yeah, I think those three TCs that Yo dropped earlier might come in huge in terms of the uh, extension of this game. Solid Janissary Mass once again, now rotating over to the right-hand side. Bombard, pan Bombard Cannons, rather, coming over to try and deal with those trebs that Andy is pumping Light out. Light Cav, going to go for the flank, but Yo has the Janissaries there, and the Cavalier can't come in from the front. The Janissaries are making this so difficult for Andy to clear up. They will counter the Light Cav, and then the Monks will counter the Cav Cavalier and the Castilia. Yeah, he is kind of extending pretty deep here, yo, into an unprotected area at the center of the map. And you can see Andy thinking about rotating around for the flank, right? Moving some of those cavalry units over to the right-hand side. Needs to take it soon, Dash. And building up more mass on the left-hand side. Does need to take it soon. Throws a couple of those light cav away to the Janissaries. His castle now under fire after picking off 
one of the Trebs. The Bombard Cannons are focusing more on the Burgundian Castle at that. Another TC added from Yo, an Elite Genissary in 15 seconds for Mr. Yo, and he's got 18 of them, he's got five in the queue. That's why I was saying he needs to take the fight soon because these things will go, I believe, from 17 attack to 22 attack as the Cavalier come in, but Elite Janissary upgrade is in. How many conversions will Yo get? Looks like he got a couple there. The Janissaries are putting out so much damage and the Bombard Cannons aren't even dying. The castle from Yo goes down. He's got enough stone for another one. Andy desperately trying to repair his. As the Cavalier come in, Janissaries shooting them down, and he manages to take out the Bomber Cannons from Mr. Yo. Yeah, was the timing right? That's the question. While he eliminates the siege, the Janissaries will prevail in the battle between the military units. But for the time being, Andy holds on to some gold positioning underneath that castle, crucially, just as he loses, or rather runs out, mm -hmm. of that secondary gold outside his base. Yeah, sold a thousand wood there. He's now buying food, which is not an excellent situation to be in. Remember, he doesn't have those relics. Yo has those, and Yo has managed to keep pace with Andy's uh, economy. He's staying more or less like five to eight K res collected behind, which doesn't sound good on paper, but he's, he's not expanding that ga gap, Andy. So Yo keeps adding villagers. He's up to almost 80 now. He's got four town centers. He's got that army composition that Andy just can't deal with at the moment. Dealt. 4,700 yeah. damage, that's crazy. Almost 5,000 now, and the firing squad is opening up on that town center, even forcing the repairs out of some of these villagers. Ooh, Andy, though, Andy's with the forward for castle raid. position, exactly, wants to break through on the gate, get a few of those cab into the back of the eco there for Mr. Yo, which could deal a deadly blow. He's also found his way onto yet another gold position and is finally reestablishing the food eco, right? From 20 on food just a moment ago, up to 40 now. It might be the balance that he this needs is... to come back in the game. Look at this aggressive castle position from Mr. Yo. This is just an army you can't fight. Like, it, you have to pick away at the edges because you just cannot fight this army if you're Andy. You have no tools. And the Bombard Cannon working away on the castle is something he needs to snipe, but with what? The Trebuchet? That's about it. The Cavalier are going to come in. You're going to lose a ton of these things as they try and snipe that siege. Villagers going down in that forward castle, but those villagers are just a distraction. It's going to buy enough time for the Janissaries to kill absolutely everything else. The castle goes down. There's no hole into Yo's base, and Andy is once again down to single-digit army count. Yeah, Cavalier falling left and right, and so while he does delay the castle going up for just a moment in the end, Mr. Yo will prevail, and now using those converted Cavalier to raid the gold positions, targeting the TC, a lot of villagers will be left Damn, to die, dude. and freaking Andy realizes it calls the GG, Mr. Yo moving to set point. And Andy's an arena, like he's an arena clown. Like he really enjoys arena, thinks Burgundians are one of the best arena civilizations. Yo doing a fantastic job pushing onto Andy's base and controlling the golds. And Andy could never really buy himself enough time. Even after he cleared up the bomber cannons and the trebs initially, Yo just never went away. And I think a key part of that is Yo adding those additional town centers and keeping his economy steady with the farm count and everything behind that. So if he needed to make a tech switch, he actually could. Yeah, a beautiful display by Mr. Yo. Again, we talked about his margin for error in that game and maybe at maximum one or two, you know, mispositions, losing a, a group of Janissaries mm -hmm. here or there, but never to such a degree that it would cost him the game. And uh, in the end prevails over what is one of the power picks on Arena in Burgundians. Of course, Turks, no slouch. Finds himself up two to one in the series for freaking Andy. Needs to put two together if he wants to give him that sh himself that shot at yep. a top four finish. <laughs> I know, I know, Andy. I've only known him for the four or five days now, but <laughs> I know him well enough to go like, when he's rubbing his face like that, he's like, how do I keep losing these <laughs> closed maps? Like, these are my maps. Like, what am I doing? Yeah. And he's going to say that when he comes out here, right? Obviously, he already has a playoff position locked up, uh, so he doesn't need to be worried about getting eliminated, but... Uh, there's a certain comfort level in not having to go through that first round of playoffs, and he definitely wants to win this series. Oh, yeah, as well as just the prize money. Let's not forget about that, right? Right now, you could secure yourself a bigger payday mm -hmm. if you make it up into the top four. Wow, they're in again. No smoke wow, break. Wow, I love this. Yo is gaming right Dude, now. He's, he's like, don't, do not interrupt me. <laughs> Feeling himself. Exactly. Feeling himself so much that as we dive on to outcrop for our fourth game of the set, Mr. Yo is going to opt for the Bohemians, Bohemians here in the red. And freaking Andy, surprise pick of Britain's. We mm -hmm. were wondering if and when that might come out, and it's outcrop. 
And uh, I, I heard this very discussion, right? It was, where is he going to use Bohemians? Viper thought it was going to be Shoals, and he thought it might be on uh, this map, on Outcrop, or they might use Cumans here. Um, also, I heard Viper asking, like, but what do you do with the Britons against Bohemians? And Andy said, well, you, you know, you go Trebs, Longbows, Crossbow, and Viper's like, what about Hussite Wagon? And Andy says, Onager. And Viper's like, what about Hussite Wagon in Castle Age? And Andy was just kind of silent, like, uh. uh <laughs> I got to think about that one. Uh, so Go to Imp. <laughs> exactly. We'll see, we'll see how, uh, how Yo decides to play this. We've got uh, somewhat non-meta pick in the Bohemians. The mm -hmm. Britons, it makes sense here. You can boom up. You can go that pressure, right? Extra TCs on the signs. You get archers. You get trebs and whatnot. But is there a lame in the center? There's a lame. He's laming a boar. Oh, wow. What? Look Andy, it's 2024. It's NAC5. People don't really lame anymore, especially at this distance. Well played, my friend. Yeah, people don't, but I do, and it's an uncontested lame at that. So stealing away a boar from Mr. Yo, as long as nothing funky happens in the final stretch to the TC here. My big question, of course, is going to be Britons uh, and how they deal with any source of mobility on this map. Not to say that Bohemians are the bastion of mobility. As yeah, yeah, they don't. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they're not. Uh, yeah, but we do know that Mr. Yo is incredible at playing kind of a, mm -hmm. a multi-point mm -hmm. type of game, right? Mm -hmm. And it always comes with castle control and intelligent positioning. Britons typically wanting that crucial mass late in the game and a centralized push with their uh, trebuchets. Nice. Look at that. Double boar lure at the same time. Yeah, and you make sure that the boar hits him twice. And then for a player of Andy's caliber, like luring in a boar, you can see he's not even bothering with garrisoning the villagers in the TC. He's just going to right-click it mm -hmm. and then save that one. Luring the boar and bringing another one back with the scout at the same time, it's it's difficult, but he's got the muscle memory, and it's going to work 95% of the time. Now, saving grace on this map for Mr. Yo that while he loses a boar, he can push in some deer, and, of course, there is extra food available on the wings of this map as long as his scout gets out there and finds it. Mm-hmm. I think you won't have to worry about that mobility that you were talking about for Mr. Yo because I think you're not catching up to Yo. Yo will come to you. Right, like, right. Yo will come to you. He's not going to be running away most of the time. You can just wait for that pressure and then figure out a way to deal with it. Taking that boar from Bohemians, though, it kind of negates that fast castle approach that Yo might want to go for. And maybe Yo is going to have to adapt his build a little bit. I like that initiative from Andy. You're down 2 1. That's a non meta play that if you get away with it is going to be a really nice boost to your economy and a negative um, to Yo's economy. So beautiful start. And speaking of economic bonuses on this map, of course, also the Britons, uh, you know, uh, faster uh, collection on sheep and mm -hmm. with those extra cows out to the wings, that's going to help boost your food economy and maybe keep you off of farms for longer. Exactly. You don't need to make that switch onto farms. You don't need to spend wood for that. And speaking of not spending wood, their town centers also cost 50% less wood. And you have to expand to the outer edges with your town centers, right? That's where all the stone is. There's literally no stone up on this plateau area as Yo runs into the TC from Andy. So he's like, where's my boar? Is that my boar? Where is it? Excuse I me, want sir. some of that. Yeah, return that, please. <laughs> on the other side, Bohemians, we've been talking about them. They have they have some potential. Blacksmith Monasteries Universities cost 100 wood, so that helps with the FC. The chemistry in the Castle Age with Hand Cannoneer can be so devastating. One of the most dangerous pushes in the Castle Age. And, of course, more damage on the Spearman line. Don't have to worry about that much against the Britons. Yeah, there is a stable going up for mm -hmm. the Britain player right now, so actually could come into play here early on in the Feudal Age. And then, of course, you already called out the Hussite Wagon, just a power <laughs> unit, especially in the Castle Age. All forms of laming are allowed. That's good. That's and good and that's what we've worked towards. If you're wondering why we're not seeing as much laming as we used to, uh, it's generally because the map scripts have gotten so good where you don't normally have two uh, elephants or boars forward anymore. And there's no randomness in that. You have one forward, one at the back. So it's kind of like if that player decides to go for the forward boar and lure it in first and you get there with your scout, there's going to be no boar available. Exactly. So the laming has been nerfed a little bit by good map scripting across all the tournaments, but we still allow it. But also then that means that it's good recognition from Andy that this is one of the few maps where that's a possibility mm -hmm. because you know where your opponent is, right? Given the generation, if you mm -hmm. go straight up the gut on this grassy terrain, you will run into your opponent. This snow leopard is causing all sorts of problems. <laughs> he was like, get out of my way. I'm going skirmisher spear. I don't want to deal with you. Thank you very much.
Okay, freaking Andy with the Spear of Zone chasing the scalp. A great micro here for Mr. Yo to not take a single poke, and ultimately the Spearman will go down. We do have three scouts on the field here for freaking Andy, kind of grouping up in the back of the base. Wall's not complete just yet for Mr. Yo, so some damage could be found. He needs Spearman at the back there. He's going to lose a Ville. Great pressure from Andy. Really, really solid stuff. Stuck up against the wood line. Yo will go fight with the Maybe villagers, and I, I think he might lose a second here if he's not paying attention. He's got another army to pay attention to forward. Uh, really, really high value uh, scout production here from Andy as he snipes a second villager, gets away with all of his scouts, albeit at low HP. He's pushing in towards the town center, Mr. Yo, but he's not able to find any damage whatsoever, and this is all because he sent the spearmen forward to protect his army. He didn't keep them at home. If he did, Andy would have never gotten away with this. That's beautiful damage found so far by Andy with two villagers already eliminated from his opponent. Now, it is at the cost of two of those scouts' lives, but I think that's a good trade all in all for our Britain's player. He's running out of cows too. He didn't find as many cows as he might have liked to with the uh, increased harvesting on the herdables. He had his scout laming, which means he couldn't scout the outer edges there and bring in more cows. And you can see there's still neutral cows around. And Andy's tr actually trying to search for those now because he doesn't want to add as many farms as he might need to here in a second. But still, it's a, it's a good economy setup for him. Yo has lost two villagers. Um, you can see the res collected. It's already a significant advantage for Andy and Yo. Unable to really find any significant damage with that skirmisher push, and Andy is about to be in again. Yo, you got a wall! There's still a hole in the back anyway, even if this wall completes right around the other side. Okay, yes, there is a spear Yo! there that waits Yo! with open arms, but he go ahead and targets the low health palisade, and this is another villager going down. Three vills to be found early in the game here for freaking Andy. Yeah, and Andy just runs a slalom around those uh, spearmen right there. He's going to look for some more weak villagers, maybe some he hurt before, maybe some more exposed villagers. There's one, but... That's a risk as Yo goes for the gate. Okay. Okay, Yo. He's looking for it. A little bit of poke damage onto those scouts. It's a minor thing, but I'm still going to call it out. We just saw Horse Collar come in for Mr. Yo after 10 farms are dropped. So investment of food and wood, that's not really going to net him anything yeah. until he drops more farms. Maybe a peculiar choice. Well, he's going for that second round, right? So that that's something that it might have just been a, a, a play that he thought he couldn't get Horse Collar earlier or he's going to drop some more farms here in the future, which he is right there. He can afford it now. Uh, it's been become more common that players just get horse collar in time for the second round of farms. Um, in the last few years, Hera kind of <laughs> very fond of that approach. Right. Ooh, over. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, it's, he's uh, in. Four skirmishers and one spear. So obviously this is chip damage and maybe even something that villagers. But what do you have to clear away. this up? You only have a stable. Right? Good point. You so only have need, a stable. You need big enough numbers to deal with the spear first, and then, of course, you'll make quick work mm -hmm. of the skirmishers. Look at this. This villager has to retreat oh. back to the TC and might even lose his life. An yeah. attempted wall off. Quick walls those ain't going to help you. Those are units, my friend. And so the villager does go down. Only one scout back at home for the time being. Targets the skirmishers, but we'll have to micro away from the spear as it rolls over. Once you clear that spear, you have no worries about that army. Exactly. But that, uh, I mean... Okay, so you have very limited worries about that. No, Yo dodges the arrows. Once you clear that, you have no worries about this army. It's just skirmishers. You can clear it up with scouts. But with the spearmen there, makes it a lot more dangerous. Maybe could snipe maybe one more villager. Castle Age now on the way for Mr. Yo. It's only a minute away from Andy. And Andy is doing everything in his power to try and bait this spearman back into the town center. And Yo's like, no, 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 no. We're not sacrificing this guy. I'm keeping him near my units. And this is so much value for such a nothing force that came forward here from Yo. Yeah, such a nuisance. Uh, the first of the skirmishers and the second finally going down. This blacksmith has been delayed for ages. Uh, luckily, Andy doesn't need it to get up to the castle age, but he'd love it by the time he gets He'd there. really like it, especially yeah. <laughs> because I think he's sending two villagers forward uh, for a siege workshop. Ah. So you need the blacksmith for the siege workshop, and there's the villagers right there. He's going to get that blacksmith up. It's Yo, not up. I still it's see still the not, up. It's not oh, up. Oh, man. They're like... Could those lumberjacks help? Thank you. There we go. Okay. Builds the blacksmith with three villagers, and finally he has an opportunity with n almost a thousand wood in the bank to make the siege workshop forward. Such an unexpected result from an the skirmishers and spearmen that we thought would do absolutely zero. The most zero. 
valuable four sperms yeah. in one spear I've ever seen in my life, getting a villager pick and delaying the blacksmith for eternity. Both players have chosen the right side for their first expansion. Andy already going to three TCs. Of course, Yo needs to wait 20 more seconds before he has the opportunity to drop any of his own, but that's where that wood bonus mm -hmm. there for Britons comes in big. He can drop two TCs while dropping a forward seeds workshop. Yeah, but look at his food count now. Six on food, and I think that's a result of not finding enough cows early, mm. and, uh, you know, he didn't get the farm count up that he needed to. Obviously, he's going into additional TCs. There's some hunt on the side, so maybe he can take some of that, or maybe, as we saw before, sell some wood, buy some food, now up to 11. So whether he can keep these town centers running is a question. We've got a monastery here from Yo. Monastery, if you get fervor, could help. Uh, your villagers get faster as well, and you could go for redemption defense. Look at the resources from Mr. Yo right now. 1,000 food. Just go to him. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go to Imp, and then when you get there, there's absolutely nothing to do. He is on stone, though, and he's got 500, and he's buying stone, so he's definitely thinking about a castle. And this goes back to the conversation I mentioned earlier where Viper was like, what do you do against Hussite Wagon, right? Mangonels are, are quite good against them, although Hussite Wagons have pretty decent attack, so if you get three of them, they can set down the Mangonels. Mm -hmm. And if you get the monk Hussite Wagon combo, then it can I be don't pretty devastating. I, I think it would have to be something like either just defensive buildings, walls from Andy, or try and outboom it, or maybe even go into something like knights, which would then be countered by the monks or the pikemen yeah. from Bohemians. Well, speaking of outbooming, it is three TCs to just a second one going up now for Mr. Yo, as he mm -hmm. did invest that early stone into the castle position defensively at home. Has two villagers still collecting, and so will soon look to add a third. But either way, I think freaking Andy will be happy with at least some of the pressure that he's put forward towards that base and is now going to rotate to the out, uh, to the outer rings and see if he can scout where those TCs are being dropped. Eco lead is still there for Andy. And and we discussed that, like, what to do against SI Wagon. Sometimes you just need to outboom your problems mm -hmm. in terms of military units, right? So maybe Andy can keep all these SI Wagons back here with the pressure. Also, like have doesn't do terribly yeah. until there's a they large suck, number of SI Wagons. Your own <laughs> Mangonels, though, and the first shot did land on the light cast. He's, no, he's, he's attack round. Yeah, now, no, the yeah. first one did, though. Yeah, and then he and then he realized that's always a mistake. frustrating yeah. one. Yeah, especially when they auto attack. It's like I didn't tell you to do that. <laughs> Hussite wagons in defense. Mangonel pushing in does a decent amount of damage uh, to these wagons, but the spearmen are there, and this is going to make things difficult. And he needs a good attack round. He gets a little bit of damage, but it's not enough. And those are some hero spearmen, Bohemians. What have you been eating? Oh my goodness. Look at that, that extra damage they get on the bonus. The knight barely escaped with his life, but he'll leave the mangonel to die on his own forward. One relic already coming home here for Mr. Yo as well. Wheelbarrow in to match the wheelbarrow of his opponent. Now we have heavy plow coming in for freaking Annie, and so that goes back to the point you were making. Just outboom your problems, jump to a fourth TC. We might look to go late. I mean, this problem is approaching. I won't say fast, because these wagons are rolling at a very slow pace, but it is it is inevitable. And it's coming towards your base, and redemption is on the way for Mr. Yo, which will give him a solution against the buildings. Wagons. I love that. Yes, he is, and that's some good uh, HP to have, especially if you're fighting up against mangonels. Anything is nice. And he is going for one extra mangonel, but like I said, redemption 15 seconds away as Yo slowly rolls out across the map, five TCs for Andy. We just have to ask ourselves, what is the solution to this unit? Because archers aren't going to cut it. And Yo can always add in monks or pikemen in addition to the wagons. Yeah, Andy's taking his foot completely off the gas. Oh, Mangonel comes out. He does have one Mangonel in the queue. It snipes the monk before Beautiful. the conversion on the Siege Workshop comes through, but it will fall in the end to the Hussite wagons. Got some good damage, but still the numbers are strong here. Now up to six here for Mr. Yo in that count. This is a really tough position for Andy because I feel like Yo is going to push these TCs. He sees that. And what's going to follow up once these Hussite wagons roll under here? There's going to be a castle from those villagers at the town center um, to a little bit to the north of that one. So it's really, really devastating. Look at that. He just bought gold or bought stone, and here come the villagers. Here come the villagers. Castle follow-up. That'll take Andy off of the stone. It'll take him off of the gold. Andy doesn't have enough stone for a counter castle. And then Andy will only have one town center on this outer area. 
Yeah, he bought 100 food, bought 100 stone, thought about a counter castle, realizes that's not in the cards for him. A couple villagers go down, but this castle is inevitable in a forward position. He'll have to evacuate these two resource positions. Now again, resources are looking very strong for our Britain player, but it's just about where are you going to put those resources? What are you going to invest them mm -hmm. into? He built two archers. I think he's Ooh. rethinking that decision now. Ooh, castle of his own behind. I mean, the castle would likely go up. But then once Yo sees that, I think he just pressures under um, the other town center with his Hussite wagons or even goes to the main base from Andy. However, Andy does almost have enough to click up to Imperial Age. If Yo is trying to go up to Imperial Age, he's going to need a few more minutes. I mean, so maybe there's your answer. The only thing I can think about is outranging the Hussite wagons, mm -hmm. right? I get to Imp. I utilize the Britain's bonus. But look at how Either with Arbalists are. or Longbows, right? Yeah, I might be tickling you for one damage a hit, but eventually I'll whittle you down while you can't close the distance with that slow-moving unit. I don't know. I'm grasping at mm -hmm. straws here because I agree with you. This is looking scary. Yep, and we've got... The Wagenberg tactics for the extra speed on gunpowder units coming in from Mr. Yo. Another town center on the left side from Andy. So uh, he's trying to outsource his resource. <laughs> as uh, is going to be our second album drop. Uh, I like that, man. <laughs> dude. We we got a we got some writing to do when we get home. E then, exactly. Man. We got Thirty songs that we got to get out. Exactly. And Andy, he's struggling. He's struggling for options here. Like, what what do you do against this unit? As the Britons, you got to go for siege and then onager. But it's going to take some time, and these things are fairly mobile, so they can kind of dodge around the shots a yeah, little bit. I think it's going to be Longbow Onager, right? He's got a few Longbows in the queue. That's just going to give him a little something, yeah. right? Maybe to deal with monks, just to poke and mm -hmm. prod at his opponent. But you're right. I mean, Andy called it. The thing he thinks that beats Hussite Wagons is Onager. So that's his attempt. I got a race to get there. Yeah, Britain's obviously not getting access to Redemption is killing them mm. here, right? You can't just convert the Hussite Wagons back. And that's some really nice kills from Andy. The villagers actually get decent damage against the Hussite Wagons. So he was popping out and, and hitting them while he could. But these Hussite wagons do have seven pierce armor and the, the long bows are barely cracking through that um, even with the upgrade so the Hussite wagons will loop around to Andy's main economy yo has enough stone for another castle and yo is scouting the town center foundation on the left side of the map so yo is looking for Andy he knows he's out there he he's not looking for extra stones or golds he's looking for Andy's town centers and he's gonna drop a castle on the face of Andy. Maybe pull some more villagers over there to make that save too. And what did we say? While neither Civ rather is particularly good with the mobility, it's something that Mr. Yo as a player excels at, right? Mm -hmm. Identifying how he can do that kind of seesaw pattern around the map. He's it does drop go for the TC. First. Still does plenty go. of stone in the bank to drop a castle if need be. I'm really surprised. I guess he only had three villagers there, so... Ah, okay. Okay, I knew... I could Aha. sense the castle somewhere. There it is. It wasn't quite aggressive enough for Mr. Yo, so he's going to go ca for a castle Do you die in between the, the town centers. Do you just target villagers here? I think it's really dangerous, right? Because then you lose all your longbow numbers, and then you have nothing to distract Mr. Yo with. Also, these villagers have sanctity. These villagers have fervor, they're fast, and they're tanky. Oh, no. And there's a monk behind healing. Now oh, it's, a, no. it's a tower from Andy. He does have ballistics, he does have bodkin, so that tower is doing a decent amount of damage. But the monk is healing the damage from behind. Yeah, and through all of that, he lost the longbow in anyway, right? Mm -hmm. on, on the way in, the mango oh! fell as well. Now the Hussite wagons make it to the left-hand side, looking to deny this t uh, TC. Andy desperately trying to get it up, and he will, but still under threat in that regard, and probably more concerned with the castle that just got dropped on his face at home. It's just crazy. Andy is in Imperial Age here. Yo is in Castle Age, and he's making do with just the Hussite wagon. It's kind of like that meme. It's like, I fear no man, but that thing, <laughs> that thing that terrifies me. Thing. Yeah, that nice giant shots. box on wheels with a cannon in the front. Oh, Fantastic nice shot. Fantastic shot. Two in a row and a ton of Hussite wagons melt in that moment. Still not much military behind it. We've got the monks looking for a conversion. Redemption is in. We'll mm -hmm. remember that from earlier. More siege workshops here on the left-hand side. Yo's going to continue He got the, the Mangano, pressure. too. He converted the Mangano. 
Oh. So he gets a shot on the Mangano from Andy, but Andy clears up more Hussite wagons. The Mangano goes down for Mr. Yo, the converted one, and Yo is on the way up to the Imperial Age as Andy is dropping a castle over on the left side, but Yo is there. He's got the forward siege workshop. He's got the monks. He's got the Hussite wagons. I don't think Andy's going to be able to hold on to this position if Yo like single clicks each one of these on a different villager i think he can stall this out but right now he right clicked a villager that's running away so that's good recognition from andy to bait the fire away with those hussite wagons yo is looking for another castle position yeah the awareness has been on point for yo in terms of when and where andy's going to want to expand but as you said great micro from andy to mm -hmm. possibly get that castle up 40 to 3 in the end i said possibly and it looks that possibly turns into an impossibly there's a mangano there too like, Andy's got this TC, but there's a Mangonel and there's Hussite Wagons there. Look at the Eco KD dash, 47 to 3. But Andy is still kind of holding on here. He's got Trebs attacking that castle. Yo is on the way to Imperial Age. Andy has enough stone for another castle, but the rest of his resources looking fairly dire as the Longbows and the Mangonels are still pushing. And the castle is still the 991%. Hussite Wagon is in the way. It's in the way. So the, the villagers couldn't pad there. But, but now the that it's eliminated, is the there. Mangonels fighting so many shots. I think I think the castle think might go up. up. I think the castle goes up. I think the castle goes up. The villagers are fighting against the Hussite wagon, and the castle goes up, but it was an expensive one. 60 to 3. Eco KD at the moment. Disgusting. It goes up in the end, and as uh, Andy's castle goes up, Yo's castle will fall on the front to the trebuchets that were parked on top of the hill. And he says, "Okay, if I lose that forward ca castle position, how about oh, just repair one this Mangano with side. absolutely every villager. Just keep it rolling. Don't get hit by a trap shot, and you're fine." You can take up the, the Trebs here. So we've got a repair off here. We've got Andy repairing his Trebs. we got Yo Ooh. getting hit by the shot. You just had to know that would happen, yeah, right? Exactly, right. OK, <laughs> Castle on the wood line here on the left-hand side. Now Andy's going to try and reach out <laughs> to the left. And another Castle war between the two players. It's absolute chaos on the map. We have it 104 is. villagers apiece. Both players barely scratching double-digit military units at the moment. And it's like, if you're Mr. Yo, what do you change here because it feels like Andy is slowly gaining back control. What are you going to go into? Do you have the time to make it into something like Hufnitsa? You can see he's banking up resources for something. We just have to wonder what that is because clearly the, while the castle pressure has made things messy, you see an instant replay here. Wow. Nice shots. Three go down. And then there. another, I think it was another three here. Boom. That's pretty. The castle pressure has been working. But uh, yeah, you're going to need to switch it up at some point. I fear no man, but that thing, it terrifies me. All right, more mangonels. That's the response so far. Hasn't been able to make it into Onager just yet, right? Which is clearly the goal in the long term against the Hussite Wagons. Chemistry now coming in for Mr. Yo, a favorite of the Bohemians, as they are primarily a gunpowder sieve. In that regard, Trebuchet. Look at this. You're from both sides. I, that's crazy. Yeah. I, like, you didn't expect me to come from your own base with this Trebuchet mm -hmm. on the hill, protected by the castle. He's still fire. pushing here, too. And he's got a watchtower that he's repairing with everything now. And Andy is trying to batter that down. The Hussite wagon still holding onto the hill. The converted Mangano trying to get value against the longbows. Yo is repairing that tower. He's got some upgrades for it, but it looks like Andy might be able to take it down. Andy getting masonry. He takes down the castle from Yo on the left side. The question is, what does Yo go into? He's finally gotten chemistry, and he's getting block printing, but it's still a hectic, hectic game, and it's tough to make a tech switch in this environment. Yeah, block printing going to be important because he has struggled to get a number of the conversions onto the mangonels. The longbow is doing a great job of sniping monks, but now in danger of losing this castle position on the left-hand side while he has one near total control of the right in terms of castle presence. The amount of villagers just attacking at random areas. Or just running. Or, or, or running marathons. Attacking, repairing, like... Running, it's just crazy as Yo goes for a castle in the middle. He senses that Andy might go for a push down that area. Yo does need to make sure that he holds on to these sides, though, because Andy's got a foothold on both of them. He's trying to push it back with the Trebs, but Andy has Trebs of his own. And there's still Hussite wagons there, but Andy wisely using the villagers in all of these engagements because they actually do quite well against these wagons. Right now, that's his best counter to the wagons. It's just villagers. It's pretty wild to say, mm -hmm. but you're exactly right. And once again, I think credit to Andy and the type of player that he is. 
he really does have such a creative understanding of he all recognizes of the zips, it. right? Yeah. yeah. And so he's going to utilize every single thing available to him in order to take this game, trying to push this castle position back. And if he does, we kind of equalize to like 50% control for both players. Yeah, Bomber Cannon, though, clearing up the trebs. So Andy will need to get more trebuchet on the field to take out that castle. Meanwhile, Bomber Cannon from the other side attacking the gold. And Yo is still trying to get into a can Andy's main economy, which he's doing right now. He's got three castles producing Hussite Wagons. He's got a few Bombard Cannons. Still hasn't made that switch. Maybe he feels like Hussite Wagons is the long-term solution against Britons. Andy, by the way, still hasn't been able to afford Onager at any point. Yeah, at the very least, I think, for Andy, you're just trying to keep your opponent from ever making it to who needs to upgrade, mm -hmm. right? Like, okay, I know that Bombard Cannons are an inevitability, as we can see here, but as long as I can make this messy enough Ooh. that you can't cleanly get to those resources, okay, Longbow swooping in to deny a castle position. The target fires need to be there. Yo recognizes, throws more villagers forward to make this complete. The Bombard Cannon also looking for the hits onto the Longbows, and I think in the end, the castle will go up. Yeah, Sanctity for the villagers is coming in clutch this game like just having that extra 15 hp on each villager has been huge with the amount of forwards that yo has had the repair villagers the attacking villagers everything he's trying to micro down this mangonel and he's hitting a few of the villagers but the mangonel is still getting value against the trebuchet what a ridiculous fight to be having when we have 156 versus 145 pop yeah, how wild is this? Through all of this, near equivalent res collected, near equivalent res destroyed between both players. Feels like we've got blinking lights all over the map. How many so castles So much this to pay game. attention to. It's crazy, right? Trebuchets, now four of them somehow from Andy, hard focusing this castle. Yo, focusing one treb down, but the castle dies still. More trebuchets under attack, and the castle is under attack by Yo still from that trebuchet on the hill. The Hussite wagon sitting there cleaning up the villagers. 116 to 24 eco KD. Yeah, Yo's castle crumbles. Andy will keep his up. He committed about 20 to 30 villagers to repair that, then sends the remaining villagers to deal with the trebuchet and now to clean up the Hussite wagons once again, conscripting the boys and girls into the military and using them to great effect. The villagers attacking the Hussite Wagons has been the best thing for Andy. It's been insane. And yeah. he just keeps up the villager production. Look at the like the amount of TCs he's had at all times. He's got a solid vill count at 133. And they're constantly attacking bomber cannons or Hussite Wagons. Maybe the bomber cannon there. He's, <laughs> <You know>? he's yeah. <laughs> the, the stoppable force versus the movable <laughs> object a little bit over there. He has, he has lost as many villagers as he currently has. Yes, exactly. That is a wild statistic. And he is producing them like a military unit. And Yo is suddenly up to 141. And I think that, like, normally you'd look at that and you'd go, like, maybe Yo is over booming with seven more in the queue. But it's very small numbers of units, very powerful units for Yo. And he's using those villagers to fight in forward position. So I think that's a really good thing for him to just keep the villager number as high as he can. I wouldn't even be sad with, as another bomber cannon dies the castle. Wow. I wouldn't even be sad with, like, 160 bills for him. No. I think it'd be solid until you realize your pop cap, and then you start deleting, or just send him forward. What I would like to see here from Mr. Yo is a redistribution of his villagers. He's got mm -hmm. 80 on wood currently, and only 20 <laughs> on food. We could probably uh, make uh, or we can mix it up a number, little bit, mix it yeah, up just a little bit. And again, that speaks to him eventually needing to get to Hoofnitsa. It feels like to deal with uh, Andy in the long run. See Jejaneers before Oninger. For Andy, so it benefits both his Trebs and his Mangonels, but still, it's a very, very expensive upgrade. It'll give you plus one range. It'll give you a little bit more damage against the buildings as Andy tries to save the Treb. Bombard Cannon not able to get the kill. And how about this? Masonry just now coming in for Mr. Yo, where it's been in for quite some time here for Andy. And as we've talked about how much focus has been around the castle position, the number of castles that have mm -hmm. gone up and have fallen for both players, I think Andy will be happy to have invested in that uh, upgrade quite early. Look at Yo's villager count. Just keeps going up and up and up. And same with Andy. There's Andy's so used to losing them, he's got to be surprised when he looks up there. He's like, oh! 148, that's really good. Yo's at 150, and he's getting Siege Engineers, and finally, Onager. Onager coming in. Andy can't complete that castle. I don't think he lost the stone from that, though. And the Hussai Wagons are still pushing in on this side. We've got uh, Mangonels making their way in, but don't we've got a Bomber Cannon, and a Monk converting. Mangonels go down. 
Yeah, unfortunate for him to lose those just before that crucial upgrade comes in. Now we have Trebuchets out in no man's land, targeting one of the castles here from Andy. He's replaced that castle back at home to try and make sure it goes down in a slightly more defensible position. But those Hussite wagons could roll forward and find some damage. Sappers, once again, two games Sappers in a row. is amazing. I, it was, it's amazing, 160 villagers. Yeah. It, it, like, you need pop space? Okay, just send the barn, and they're going to get Little some extra he's damage. He's sending everything. They have fervor. They have sanctity. These are some of the most powerful villagers in the game, but Andy goes for the gates. He goes for the house. He just attack the gates. Yo, you have sappers. What's he known for? He's known for quick walls. Oh, the auditors. It to effect the castle fire from both oh! castles. The auditors making quick work of these villagers. And hey, you know what? I just needed to get down to 130 bills. So that's how I'm going to do he it. He didn't here get for anything. Not a single trebuchet falls in the end. Disaster strikes in that moment. Whew. That was a certified villager buffet right there. That was crazy. Elite Husse Wagon is insane. Elite Husse Wagon is going to go so hard here, but Warwolf also for Andy. What a crazy matchup. Look at the amount on stone for Andy. He's got 24 just to repair these castles. 41 on gold right now. Damage taken, 37 points. Oh, that, well, that explains that why he has 24 on stone. Right? Okay. Yeah, with almost nothing. He's going to try bank. and repair that, too. He's buying he's more stone. buying stone with 25 currently collecting because he's repairing on both sides currently to defend against the pressure that Yo continues to throw at him. Again, the, the military numbers have barely ever eclipsed 25 for either <laughs> player. It's I know. actually incredible. It's, it's insanely high value units. We have longbows, we have onagers, we have some trebs on the field for Andy, and then you look over at Yo, we've got monks, we've got Hussite wagons, bomber cannons, trebs. And of course, villagers have been an important part of the action here for both players. Yeah. That castle is still alive. Warwolf treb is out for Andy, so How he's hitting all of his now? shots. He's bills? hitting all of his shots. 45k damage absorbed by that castle. One of the trebs going down. Warwolf is going to make it very easy for him to eliminate them or maybe even Ooh, target that bombard cannon. cannon. He's, he's got the longbow shooting at it. He kills it and he saves the castle. Meanwhile, he saved the castle on the other side. Hufnitsa, Hufnitsa. Two minutes until Hufnitsa is in. That could be what Yo needs. But look at Yo's population. Game. 143. Maybe he shouldn't have sent. 40 villagers on a suicide mission into the castles of Andy. This is just teetering on a knife's edge. It feels like for both players here, holding on to castle positions for dear life, holding on to those important resources out on the wings of the map. For Yo, he's down to three castles in total, one in the center and one on each side. Both players just consistently making bills. There's no point in this game where they just stall up making bills. Both of them, Yo has 10 more in the queue. He's like, might as well, man. Might as well. I'm not making the greatest decisions when it comes to their livelihood. So let's just keep making more babies. We're also 55 minutes in, we've never hit pop cap. Yep. Nobody has been able to pop cap themselves in this one. Another great hit from the Britain trebuchets with Warwolf guaranteeing oh, those shots. Oh, these things are deadly, though. These things are deadly. Can we take a look at the stats on a singular Hussite wagon just to take get a better idea of what that elite upgrade... Ooh. Vodka? <laughs> <laughs> that elite upgrade gave you. It gives you the extra attack. 10 pierce armor now on this thing. 230 HP. Now we had to wait two minutes, but Hufnitsa is finally in. There's only two on the field currently, and they are split across the map. A lot of times, you, again, for both of these civs, really, you'd like to centralize and mass up your units because they pack a powerful mm -hmm. punch. But if they find purchase onto the targets like they did just then, they make quick work of anything they come into contact with. Oh, my goodness. Yo is just one of the greatest players in these situations. Look at him attacking Onager with one villager. How is that castle still alive? Excuse me. Are we at 50K yet? <laughs> Are we at 50K yet? Oh, we're way past 50k, <laughs> almost up to 55 at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Just sinking and he's got zero on stone. Oh. What a hold from Andy, what a hold, but the Hussite wagons are here and he's had problems with these things all game. The trebuchets though, 
pushing those Hussite wagons away. Illumination coming in for Mr. Yo. He's got Hussite wagons working against the Onagers. We're at a point where Andy even might be running out of like wood to take. No, the whole southern, yeah, the whole southern side of the map. He's okay. He's got, out he's of got wood. one he little, a little wood bit patch. there, but not much. You're right. And some over there. Out. He yep. has to recognize it though, and he's got to get out there. Even going for two man saw now just to increase mm -hmm. that production. Villagers coming over to repair the Hufnitsa. You gotta love it though. The villagers on this left hand side committing to keeping the Lord inside that castle alive. That's a. Uh just, pretty good. just an insane game. The Warwolf tech is giving so much value for Andy, though. It's actually kind of worse against Hufnitsa and Bomber Cannons because you, you hit every shot 100%. So you're always going to hit where you aimed at initially. If the player moves it, it's ah. a problem, right? However, it's really good. Well, and it, it works if Yo's not paying attention. It's really, really good against the trebuchets because you're hitting every single shot on those. Yeah. A guarantee, in fact. Architecture now coming in for Yo to one up. 40. <laughs> 40. Can you hit the corner total. with that? Can we hit the corner? Uh, okay, never no. mind. <laughs> Zero on stone, though, for either player. So right now, it's just about what they have in the banks or what they're willing to buy. And Yo has about 750 to go. In oh, the castle the dies. The castle finally goes down. Oh, uh, what kind of what kind of like emotion are you feeling as Andy when that castle goes down? I mean, that's brutal, man. You've invested so much into that. Uh, and uh, that's uh, that's going to go down in history, I think, because one of the most. <laughs> One of the most uh, absorbative castles we've ever seen in our lives. Here go the Onagers looking for snipes onto the uh, Hussite wagons, and they find good hits. We've got a lot of villagers now starting to go idle as they look mm -hmm. for wood lines to chop. It's a messy fight Why, in the middle like, of the map. Is Yo deliberately chopping this wood to lame the wood from Andy long term? Or like what? Not or not does he, idea, he, he probably is available at the top of the map. He probably just wants villagers for it. I mean, he's found success with them so far this game, and he's going to find two more town centers. Andy is definitely. Not giving up here. He is going to go for two more town centers on this side. Yo is at 145 population. Andy's still at 167. And the Onagers with Siege Engineers are getting some serious value here, uh, even against the elite Hussite wagon. But Yo has another castle up. He's not going to be able to kill that Onager somehow with the castle. And it continues to get value until the Hussite wagons can clear it. All right, they close the distance, they get the snipe, but still take a lot of damage in return. That's the final castle position that Yo will commit to until he can buy more stone. In fact, this might be the final stone position mm -hmm. on the map but that both uh, players are fighting over currently. Yeah, Yo is pushing through the middle. Andy still holding on tenaciously on that left side into the corner, denying Yo those resources while having full security on the right side. But Yo with the Hufnitsa, Yo with the Hussite wagon is in a good position still and has the castles alive. Andy's castle is being pushed from the other side by the Hufnitsa and Andy still kind of struggling for wood access. Look at Yo's resources right now. 1,300 gold, 1,400 food, 5,700 wood. It's starting to look dire at this point now for Andy. Again, just trying to find avenues for him to get out of it and as castle uh, positions continue to fall, he has less source or less safety. Send the boys and girls! Still trying to repair, but only 100 stone in the bank Yo, move currently. that Hufnitsa. Don't. You got to move them. You got to keep them on the run. Sappervilles. Doing a lot oh, of damage oh, to that castle. Oh, oh, oh. Come on. No. Do uh, it. So much commitment to the repairs, though. He's going to run out of stone in just a bit. So oh, if he doesn't kill come these on. Bills, if he doesn't kill the bills, the castle will go down Do regardless it. of the repairs. The Hotslide Wagons are in the middle. We need to see the castle on the right side. We need to see the castle on the right side. It, Vodka's got it up here. We can see the HP at the bottom there. 250, 200, 190, 140, 120. I feel like an auctioneer. 50, 40, 30, 20. He bought stone. He bought stone. 40. Oh, is he going to get He's it down? No, the it. repairs are in in the end. They're still smacking away. We'll check back in on that one, and you can track the health at the bottom of your screen, but it looks like Andy may have done enough to keep that one alive for the time being. So we uh, look to other places on the map to see where progress is made. On the left-hand side, Yo has almost taken total control. He's going to target that gold position soon enough with the elite Hussite wagons, and he's found his way back onto stone, the only stone remaining on the map. The castle is still being, the castle is still being targeted. We have that constantly at the end. And there, the castle in the base goes down, uh, but the one on the right side is still being battered by the villagers. Does Yo know about the wood lines to the north of his base? Can we go to Yo's point of view for one second? Because he's chopping everywhere, but he doesn't know! Dash, I was wondering about that! Oh, 
doesn't okay, know. he's got he sees just little little peaks. But he's so, he's gaming so hard right now he doesn't realize. <laughs> oh, good onager shots, but also the onagers going down in the end. So right now it's just Long Bowman into Hussite Wagons over here, and now Trebuchets will go down. Expensive unit to be losing here in the late game. Very little food available to Andy though. He's primarily on wood and gold composition. He's trying to get some of those light cav out just to have another unit. Is in Andy going to like chop? In Yo's bit, oh, that palisade's incredibly important. We must, we must remove it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is baffling. <laughs> he's looking for That's wood. That's a misclick, right? I think he's looking for wood. Okay. I really think. I he's would looking. love to see him trek all the way through to the northern side. That would be great. In the end, uh, and we'll definitely track that in case it happens. Instead, no, he's gonna house him. Ooh, or he's stealing farms. Kill oh, me. he's going after the relics. Okay. Huh? I guess you find whatever value you can with your villagers, right? You find whatever value you Speaking can. Speaking of value with villagers here, he's going to bring them out once again to fight and the Yo is sending wagon. Yo is sending villagers over there, so it might see another castle drop, or maybe just right-click the TC and hope for the best. I mean, I cannot believe it. Yo has finally made his way up to 40 military, and that's what makes it feel like this game is his to take <laughs> as long as he executes properly. But there, the relic is ejected as the monastery goes down, now targeting the market on top of everything. Screw your mill. I'm going to make a mess of your eco with my villagers while I Double. lose my my TC on the left hand side. Double villager attack on both sides, and we are an hour and seven minutes into this game as Andy takes out the mill, takes out the market, takes out the monastery. He says GG, and what a good game uh. it was. I think Yo is smiling a little bit about that. Andy hit with a little rueful grin after that. What a wild series of events in that game four. I hope they had as much fun playing that game as we had yeah. casting it, and it looks like it with the smiles across the faces and the uh, handshake between our two players who just delivered us an amazing set. Mm -hmm. And it looks like... Uh, with that loss from Andy, I think Hart's chances are officially at zero. I think that's the development.